Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the podcast called The Dictionary. I am your host, Spencer. That's just a little little theme song from my mouth today. Maybe there will be more later. All right, let's just get right into it. I'm going to try and maybe not talk quite as much as I do sometimes. Uh, The first word in this episode is disassociate or disassociate with a a C sound or a she sound. D-I-S-A-S-S-O-C-I-A-T-E. Transitive verb from 1603. To attach from association. And the synonym is, oh, I see. The synonym is dissociate. It's not disassociate. It's just dissociate. Disassociation is a noun. Uh, Let's see. We're we're in sort of a weird section. Uh, We have been for the last couple episodes. Uh, just it's just mostly adding a dis prefix to a whole bunch of other words. Um, so yeah, let's see how long. I don't remember if I did this before. I don't think I did. How long is this dis section gonna go? It's it's very long. Let's see. Let's see. The last of the dis words will air on wow February twenty sixth. The, the very last one is the first word in this that episode. So you got some time dealing with me talking about all these dis words. Okay, sound effect. The next word is disaster or disaster if you prefer to use the S sound. Disaster. Noun from 1568. Number one. This is obsolete. It is an unfavorable aspect of a planet or star. An unfavorable aspect? This is... Oh, I I see. I get it. Let's see if the etymology is going to talk about that. But we'll come back to that in a minute. Number two for disaster. A sudden calamitous event bringing great damage, loss, or destruction. Broadly, a sudden or great misfortune or failure, as in, the party was a disaster. There was no earthquake that went through the party, or a tornado, or a fire. Well, there could have been a fire. Uh, But no, it's just a, a bad, a bad party is a disaster. Also, like I mentioned, something bringing great damage, loss, or destruction. Yes, earthquakes, tornadoes, uh, hurricanes, massive fires uh uh, monsoon i guess that's in the world of tornadoes and hurricanes kind of big big storm lots of rain um what were the uh, giant storms lightning strikes uh there's a word that i'm thinking of tsunamis that would be a disaster um was we have seen many many movies in our our days that deal with disasters you know asteroids something massive falling from the sky that would be a uh, a disaster luckily in human times we have not seen um we have not experienced something quite like that um there is i had a thought is there a movie called disaster movie yes i haven't seen it but it's a spoof it's a spoof of uh, i guess disaster movies made in 2008 and uh, yeah, that's probably a very silly and dumb movie that might be good for some entertainment. Disaster. There's the Disaster Artist. Uh, let's see, Armageddon, 2012, Independence Day, I guess you could call that a disaster movie. Uh, what was the one with uh, D- Deep Impact? I don't think I ever saw that one. Uh, oh, there, I mean, of course, then even uh, Don't Look Up. That's a disaster movie. So, uh, well, disasters are, uh, we're seeing a lot more of them because of climate change. So uh, let's let's stop climate change, please. Let's see what we can do. Can we do that, please? Okay, great. I don't trust that anything is going to be done. Let's talk about the etymology because it is directly related to that number one obsolete 
definition, which is an unfavorable aspect of a planet or star. So this is uh, from Middle French, disastre, from Old Italian, disastro. Disastro, from dis plus the word, is this Latin? Is this Latin? I think Latin astro, which means star, from the Latin astrum. And there's more at the word astral. So I guess, let's see, what what part of the DIS prefix are we using here? Uh, let's see, do the opposite of, expel opposite, not, not a star, completely, yeah, nothing specifically jumping out at me, but you know, you kind of get the idea. It's a bad thing about a star. Hmm, I wonder what context they use this in. Unfavorable aspect of a planet or star is a disaster. And then, I mean, you know, we're on a planet, so any sort of, any one of these uh, big natural disasters uh, is because it's it's an unfavorable thing happening on our planet. That's a, that's a really interesting evolution there. Never knew that. Never thought about what the etymology of was for disaster. Let's move on was my sound effect. Disaster area. Two words. Noun from 1953. An area officially declared to be the scene of an emergency created by a disaster and therefore qualified to receive certain types of governmental aid as emergency loans and relief supplies. Floods. That's another one I forgot about. Floods. That will be a disaster area. Yeah, any place that has been hit by flood, earthquake, storm, blah, 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 blah. Is, uh, if it's bad enough, it's going to be a disaster area. Do, 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 do. The next word is disastrous or disastrous. It's very sassy to say disastrous. Adjective from 1594. One, attended by or causing suffering or disaster. Attended by disaster or causing suffering. What? Attended by or causing suffering or disaster. Attended, whatever. It's uh, something about disasters. Uh, The synonym there is calamitous, as in a disastrous flood. The flood is going to cause a disaster. It will cause suffering. Number two, the synonyms are terrible and horrendous, as in a disastrous score. Maybe uh, maybe the soccer team. Nobody has scored a goal. Football, I guess, is the better way to describe this game. Nobody has scored any goals in the football game, and so it's they're, they're playing just uh, terrible and horrendous, and it's a disastrous. It's it is disastrous. They're playing disastrously, which is an adverb. Do, 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 do. Disavow is next. Uh, this is a transitive verb from the 14th century. Number one, to deny responsibility for, and the synonym is repudiate. I do not have any responsibility for what you are doing. I disavow your actions. Two, to refuse to acknowledge or accept. The synonym is disclaim, as in party leaders disavowed him. They refused to acknowledge that he existed. Disavowable is an adjective with a few vowels. And disavowal is a noun, also with a few vowels. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to probably skip a lot of the etymology in this DIS section because I think it is pretty clear in most cases. Do, 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 do. Disband is next. Verb from 1591, starting with transitive. To break up the organization of, and the synonym is dissolve. There was a band. They broke up. They have disbanded. 
Intransitive is to break up as an organization, and the synonym is disperse. So I think of this as like a company. Maybe they're dispersing their stocks, they're dispersing the all of the branches, dispersing their, uh, their financials. It's uh, getting all broken up, dispersing it, selling things off, possibly buildings and people and things. Disbandment is a noun. Do 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 do. Disbar is next. Transitive verb from 1633. To expel from the bar or the legal profession. Also, deprive of legal status and privileges. And the one who is being deprived of these statuses and privileges is an attorney. Because they have to take the bar exam to become an attorney. And then if they were doing a really bad job or did things illegal, um, which is kind of odd for an attorney to do things illegally, but, you know, it happens. If they're doing those things, then they will probably be disbarred. Disbarment is a noun. Disbelief is next. Noun from 1672. The act of disbelieving. Also, mental rejection of something as untrue. That I, I just can't believe that. I, I am in disbelief of this thing. It, it can't be true. I am rejecting this in my brain mentally because I just, it just, it's just, it's just, it's just, I have a disbelief about it. Do, 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 do. Next is disbelieve. So the previous one was disbelief that ended in a leaf, an F. This one is disbelieve that ends in a VE. Transitive verb from circa 1644. To hold not worthy of belief. Also, not believe. Oh, so that was, uh, that was transitive. Here's intransitive, which is to withhold or or reject belief. Yeah, yeah, just uh, not believing in a thing. It's not worthy of belief, so I am, I, I disbelieve. It's, it's a verb, so it's kind of a weird way to use this one in context, I think. Disbelieve. Disbeliever is a noun. The, uh, the monkey song doesn't quite roll off the tongue. I'm a disbeliever. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one, Spencer. Next. Do, 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 do. Disbenefit. Noun from 1968. Something disadvantageous or objectionable. And the synonym is drawback. Uh, just, yeah, any sort of uh, problem. It's not a benefit to you. It's, it's the opposite of a benefit. So it's a disbenefit, a drawback. I think I myself might be the disbenefit to this podcast. Do 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 do. Disbud. D I S B U D. Disbud. Maybe when you are not friends with somebody anymore, you have disbudded. This is a transitive verb from 1727, number 1, to thin out flower buds. In order to improve the quality of bloom of. Uh, so is this a thing? Will you will somebody go and thin out the flower buds, or does the flower do this on its own? But yeah, this is like um, when you're cutting off the dead branches of a tree or the dead the dead branches or leaves of uh, some sort of living thing like that. If you cut those off, then it can put its energy into the rest of it and not the dead parts. So that's why if you thin out the flower buds, it will improve the quality of the bloom. The bloom. Number two, to dehorn cattle by destroying the undeveloped horn bud. Uh, why, why exactly do we want to do this? Do you just not want them to have horns? I've seen goats that have their horns take off, uh, taken off, so maybe this is the same idea. 
Uh, there is an undeveloped horn bud, at least on cattle, and then they take that off, so they are dehorned. But I don't. Oh, the horn bud. That's why it's this bud because you're getting rid of the bud, the little the little piece there. Hmm. 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 The next word. Disburden. Transitive verb. Is it only? Nope. It's it's a verb. It's a regular old verb from 1532, starting with transitive. One a, to rid of a burden, as in disburden a pack animal. You have put all these packs on them, uh, so they can hike them up the the big big mountain for you. And then finally, when you take the burden off, you take the packs off of the pack animal, you have disburdened them of their load so they can rest. I don't think they necessarily appreciate carrying all these things, but uh, but hey, they do it. I hope you treat them well, feed them well, be nice to them. 1B, the synonym is unburden, as in disburden your conscience. Get rid of all of your negative guilty feelings and disburden your conscience. Number two, the synonym is unload, as in disburdened their merchandise in the town square. They just unloaded all their merchandise into the town square and they just left it there for people to take. Or they set it up in a nice fancy table situation with easels and then people bought it all up. So they disburdened themselves of their merchandise, and then they burdened themselves with more money. Here is intransitive. The synonym is discharge, as in the vessels disburdened at the dock. They discharged. What did they burden them? What did they disburden themselves with, or from? Was it the people? Was it the things? The the stock? The goods that they've been carrying? Maybe they had weapons. Maybe they were, maybe it was like a like a submarine vessel, and they had a bunch of missiles or something. They got rid of them. Disburdenment is a noun. Do 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 do. The next word is disburse. D i s b u r s e. This is a transitive verb from 1530 1a to pay out also expend especially from a fund and the synonym no the example is disburse money now i believe is this i'm thinking of the word disperse with a p but does that word even exist i'm feeling like I'm feeling like it must, but now I just don't know. Let's see. Well, I'm not seeing D-I-S-P-U. Is it spelled differently? Is it P-E-R? Disperse. Here we go. We do have another word, disperse. Yes, that's the one I'm thinking of. But this one does seem like it's slightly related. Um, So what did we have there to pay out, especially from a fund, disperse money? You have to be very careful about how you spell or write this, because it is very, sounds very similar to disperse. 1b, to make a payment in settlement of, as in, disburse a bill. And number two, the synonym is distribute. Disburser is a noun. So this seems mostly specific to money, So, okay, let's make this a little bit more complicated. It is from Old French, desbourser, which is from dis plus bourse. I don't know how they pronounce that in Old French, B-O-R-S-E, but it means purse, like the thing that you hold your money in. But if you say dis purse, then it sounds like the other word, which is spelled D-I-S-P-E-R-S-E, not P-U-R-S-E. So that's not complicated at all. Uh, You know, we'll have more things to say about this, I guess, when we get to the word disperse. But yeah, in this context, when we're talking literally about the purse, the thing that has the money, 
you're doing a disperse. You are getting rid of the money, distributing it, making a payment, a payout, etc. Next word. Do, 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 do. Disbursement. Noun from 1596. The act of disbursing. Also, the funds paid out are the, they're called the disbursement. You disperse the disbursement in a disbursement. Okay, we have, well, kind of one more word, three of them. Do, 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 do. The next word is the first form of the word disc, D-I-S-C, and this is a variation of the word disc, D-I-S-K. Next word. The second form of disc, abbreviation for discount. And our final word. It's the disc prefix, D-I-S-C, or disci, D-I-S-C-I, or disco, D-I-S-C-O. Was his name O? Number one. It just means disc, D I S K, as in discoid. Which one are we? It's going to be at least another episode before we see that. Number two, phonographic record. Uh huh. And the. So it means phonographic record, as in the example, discophile. So that is one who loves the phonographic records. They are a discophile. And I'm sure when we get to D-I-S-C-O, we will see some other words that are related to phonographs. Now, none of these examples had the D-I-S-C-I, but, you know, I'm sure we'll find some later. But yeah, basically, it just means disc. So a disc-like thing. A round, circly, flat thing, probably. All right. So we will reread the words real quick so we can pick a word of the episode. We had disassociate, disaster, disaster area, disastrous, disavow, disband, disbar, disbelief, disbelieve, disbenefit, disbud, disburden, disburse, disbursement, disc, disc, disc. All right. Well, I'm thinking of either maybe, I don't know, maybe one of the disaster words. Um, I don't know. I don't really like the idea of picking the word disaster as the word of the episode. Um, I mean, really any of them. But, you know, I also feel like it's good to to talk about these things and bring attention to them. Um, hmm, let's see. I mean, this episode, this whole show really is pretty disastrous, so... We could pick that, but maybe I'll just pick disaster as the word of the episode because it's just a thing that we are seeing a lot more of these days with the climate change problem. And I'm not going to ever stop talking about this because it is an incredibly serious issue. Um, And uh, so basically, if we don't make some major changes, uh, humans probably in our lifetime, the people who are listening to this Right now, the people who are alive in 2022, many of these people will experience more and more and worse disasters than what we've been seeing, uh, unless something is to be done. So let's not try to experience those. I would like to not experience those. I don't want the sea levels to rise. I don't want to be seeing worse disasters. I don't want disasters to happen in places where they haven't already been happening. Uh, We're we're seeing all of this already, and it's just going to get worse. Disaster, disaster, the whole planet is a disaster. All right, that that was just fine, just like everything else, just fine and good and dandy. Okay. Okay. I think that's a fine place to end this. Um, let's see. I uh, we've been watching a, a whole whole bunch of movies, um, and uh, I don't know where. I don't even remember where I left off. Let's see. Maybe I will say a few of them. 
Oh, what did we see? We saw the Harold and Kumar Christmas movie. We saw White Christmas. We saw Black Christmas, which are very opposite movies, and you should do a double feature of them. Home Alone 2, somehow I had never seen it. Die Hard. Oh, watching Die Hard with my family was the best because they had not seen it before, and they had, I think, such a fun time watching that movie. Oh, it was. I just wish I had a recording of of hearing watching them watch the movie i don't know if i already said that but i said it this time all right i'm going to end this episode right there and then i'm gonna do another one thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to the dictionary hosted by me spencer I would love it if you could rate and review this show on Apple Podcasts and the other places. If you want to get in contact with me, you can email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com. You can follow this show on Instagram and Twitter at dictionarypod. There's a Facebook page, too. Uh, let's see. If you want merchandise, go to the Tee Public. Uh, link. If you want to leave me a voicemail, there's a Google Voice number also in the show notes. Uh, you can join the Patreon. The link is in the show notes. If you really like what I'm doing, give me some money. Money, please. And uh, let's see. Thanks to Jonah and Tom for the theme songs. Uh, I think I think that's probably plenty of things to say right now. You can also watch this on YouTube in chunks of 10 if you prefer that. All right. The first word in this episode is discalced. D-I-S-C-A-L-C-E-D. D-I-S-C-A-L-C-E-D. Discalced. It is an adjective from 1631. I don't think I'm familiar with this word. The synonyms are unshod and barefoot, as in discalced friars. So I guess it's just if you don't got shoes on, if you don't have anything on your feet, you are discalced. Why does this word exist? What does it mean? Where does it come from? Let's see. It is from the Latin discalciatus or discalciatus, which is from dis plus calciatus or calciatus, which is from the verb calciare, which means to put on shoes, which is from calcius or calcius, which means shoe, which is from calc, which means heel. Uh, so it's uh, it's basically taking off your shoes, exposing that sexy, sexy heel to the world. Discalced. Why don't we use this word anymore? I love this word. When I get home, I'm going to take off my shoes and my socks and I'm going to say, I am discalced. I have been discalced. All right. We need to make a sound effect, which is sometimes a musical thing. Let's see. Let's do... Beep, beep, boo. The next word is discant, and it is a variation of descant with an E instead of an I. Next. Beep, beep, boo. Next is discard or discard. Emphasis on either syllable is quite all right with me. This is the first form. It is a verb from circa 1586, starting with transitive. One, to get rid of, especially as useless or unwanted, as in a pile of discarded tires. We don't want them anymore. Anything you don't want, put it in the pile. Put it in the discard pile because we don't want it. 2A, to remove from one's hand. And the example of the thing that is being removed from this person's hand is a playing card. So just if you're pulling the card out from the cards that you got, that is a discard. But also, 2B, to play... From a suit different from the one led, uh, that is, um, I think this might be with bridge, because 
the example of the thing that you are playing is any card except a trump. So if you don't have a trump card in either Bridge or one of those other games that deals with trumps, uh, then you are you're just discarding it because you don't you can't you can't do it you can't use it it's useless yeah or and it's un, unwanted so intransitive oh so I guess back to this uh, remove a playing cards from one's hand um, you you there are different ways that you can remove cards from your hand but I guess specifically we're talking about removing a card and not playing it in any place you're just discarding it you're you're putting it in the discard pile you're done with it because you know if you've got like gold go fish or something somebody could ask you for a thing and you have it so you can remove it from your hand but that's not discarding the card that's just removing it so you know the, they could be a little bit more specific here but they did get a bit more specific here with the intransitive verb definition which is to discard a playing card i think that's pretty obvious discardable is an adjective anything that you don't want or is useless is discardable and discarder is a noun here now is some synonym information for discard or discard discard cast shed Slough, I think it's slough or slough, slough, scrap and junk mean to get rid of. Discard implies the letting go or throwing away of something that has become useless or superfluous through, though often not intrinsically valueless, as in discard old clothes. They might be not valuable to you, but they might be valuable to somebody else. Cast, especially when used with the words off, away, or out, implies a forceful rejection or repudiation, as in, cast off her friends. She was getting rid of her friends, and uh, but yeah, it's, it's forceful rejection. It's not, it's not a nice way. I mean, I guess unless they're the problem, then it is a good thing to do. Then uh, they were the ones being mean, and you were the ones being nice. Say, I don't want that negativity in my life. I'm going to cast you off out of my life. Shed and slough. I'm going to say slough because I'm pretty sure that that's how you say it. S-L-O-U-G-H. Shed and slough imply a throwing off of something both useless and encumbering and often suggest a consequent renewal of vitality or or luster, as in, shed a bad habit. And then, also, as in, finally sloughed off the depression. I feel like I've heard of, like, sloughing off d dead skin cells, or uh, maybe a snake is sloughing their skin off. And yeah, that one definitely has the feeling of renewal or vitality with the new thing when you're getting rid of the old thing. Um, scrap and junk imply throwing away or breaking up as worthless in existent form, as in scrap all the old ways, also as in would junk our educational system. Hoo-wee, that was a statement on our educational system. Yes, it is not perfect. We could uh, junk it and start all over. All right. Uh, let's see, there is no etymology. The next word is discard, second form, noun from 1744, 1A, the act of discarding in a card game. You have to discard the discard. 1B, a card discarded. A card discarded is a discard. <laughs> Number two, one that is cast off or rejected, like a tire in a tire pile. Next. Discarnate or discarnate. Discarnate, discarnate. Adjective from 1895, having no physical body, 
and the synonym is incorporeal. So this is from dis plus carnate, as in the word incarnate, incarnate, however you want to say that word. Um, so incarnate would be something that does exist. It has a physical body, a structure, a thing. But discarnate is not. It's, it's in the ethers, incorporeal. A ghost is discarnate. Okay, next word. Pew, pew, pew. Disc break. Two words. Noun from 1904. A break that operates by the action of a frictional material pressed against the sides of a rotating disc by a caliper. And there is a picture of this. So, let's see. It, it looks like a, a tire. A, car, a tire on your car. Number one is the caliper, which is, it's kind of a big old thing that goes around both sides of the disc, which is number two. And I think when you hit the brakes, this thing squeezes the disc in some way so it slows down and stops. And uh, yeah, the caliper, I mean, maybe we'll post a, a picture on the social media at DictionaryPod so you can see what this whole system looks like. The disc brake system with a disc and a caliper. Next is discern or discern. It's spelled D-I-S-C-E-R-N, verb from the 14th century, 1A, to detect with the eyes, as in discerned a figure approaching through the fog. I detect with my little eyes something that I can discern. 1b. To detect with senses other than vision, as in, discerned a strange odor. Ew. So, uh, yeah, you know, what are the other senses? Your smell, your touching, your tasting, your hearing. If you sense a thing with one of those senses, you have sensed a strange, if you've sensed something, you've discerned it. Two, to recognize or identify as separate and distinct. The synonym is indiscriminate or indiscriminate. I guess it would be indiscriminate because it's a verb. As in, discern right from wrong. You can see that they are different and distinct and separate and uh, it's up to you to figure out which one you like better. Number three, to come to know or recognize mentally, as in, unable to discern his motives. Um, to come to know or recognize mentally, isn't this kind of similar to the previous one, to recognize or identify as separate and distinct, discriminate? I'm not sure how that's exactly different, but I guess there must be different in some way. Okay, so those were all transitive, I think, yes. And here is intransitive, which is to see or understand the difference. To see or understand the difference. Ah, yes, I see and understand the difference. I could not discern the difference between number two and number three. Discerner is a noun. Discernible, A-B-L-E or I-B-L-E. That is an adjective. And discernibly is an adverb. Uh, let's see, this is from the Latin discernere, which means to separate or distinguish between, which is from dis, which I guess here it means a part. Uh, I do kind of remember that, remember that. Yes, dis is a part, plus cernere or cernere, which means to sift. And there's more at the prefix dis and the word certain. And we have one more word for this episode. Was the sound effect something like discerning? D i s c e r n i n g. Adjective from 1589. Showing insight and understanding. And the synonym is discriminating, as in a discerning critic. 
they show that they have insight in a topic and that they understand it very, very well. Discriminating, discerning. But I feel like it's more than that, isn't it? When you say discriminating or discerning, I think it means more like, mm, you understand it all, and but you're very choosy. You're choosy in what you like, maybe? Yeah, I, that's kind of how I think of it as. Discerningly is an adverb. Okay, those were all the words. Not a ton in this episode because the next word that's chilling here at the bottom of this page is going to get moved into the next episode. Uh, I'm also trying to talk a little bit less. I got lots of things to do, so you get getting a slightly shorter episode. The words that we had today were discalced, discant, discard, discard, discarnate, or discarnate, disbreak, discern, and discerning. Well, I really liked the word discalced because it's all about being barefoot, which is a wonderful thing to do, especially in the grass or the sand. It feels so good. But I think I'm going to pick discard as the word of the episode. I have played many, many card games in my life. I wouldn't be considered a gamer. I don't play a lot of board games and things, and I really haven't played card games in a long time. I mean, I love all these things. I just don't do it much. Um, but yeah, just I have so many fond memories of playing, well, War isn't really a game that you discard, but, you know, Rummy, many, many games of Rummy have been played. Uh, let's see, what are some other ones? You know, then there's other ones like like uh, Phase 10. I don't remember if you discard there, but then there's other like non-standard card games. Um Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to think of other ones. Yeah, Rummy was definitely a big one. That's kind of like the go-to game. I did make up a card game once. I don't know if it was good. It was a little complicated, but it wasn't terribly complicated. And it was like all about points, and I think there was discarding in that game. Discard. A lot of games require discarding. So that's why we're going to pick discard as the word of the episode. Discard your card when you don't need it anymore. You put it all of you, you pull it out of your hand and you put it on the table and you discard in the discard pile. Discard. That's gonna be the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening to all of this stuff from my brain into your ears, and uh, hope you come back again because there is a lot more for me to say. This has been Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary and also my very glitchy face on TikTok. Go look at at Spijampar. My hair is a little, a little poofy. It's, uh, I'm going to get it cut tomorrow. Hey, let's talk about the first word in this episode for the podcast called the dictionary. The, the first word is discernment. D I S C E. R-N-M-E-N-T. It is a noun from 1586. One, the quality of being able to grasp and comprehend what is obscure. Uh, Also, skill in discerning. And uh, we're going to end this little video and talk about this. And there you have it. So, you know, sometimes I have... I have problems grasping or comprehending something that might not be very obscure, but for things that are obscure, if you can understand those, then you have discernment. You can discern things, figure out what they mean. Number two for discernment is just an act of discerning. There is synonym information which says discernment, discrimination, perception, penetration, insight, and acumen mean a power to see what is not evident to the average mind. To the average mind? A power to see what is not evident. Uh, so if you... So, oh, okay. I'm just trying to... Put it all this together in my below average mind. 
Um, if you can see what is not clear to the average person, then you have discernment, discrimination, perception, penetration, insight, and acumen. Discernment stresses accuracy uh, as in reading character or motives or appreciating art, as in the discernment to know true... I have to flip the page. To know true friends. Uh, Okay, so you have the accuracy in reading their character. Who is a true friend? Are they just a shallow friend or a deep friend? Um, or motives, you can figure out what people's motives are if you have discernment, or you can appreciate art. Those are only three examples. I'm sure that there are many others. Discrimination stresses the power to distinguish and select what is true or appropriate or excellent, as in the discrimination that develops through listening to a lot of great music. You can figure out the differences and tell what is good and what is crap. Uh, The power to distinguish and select what is true or appropriate or excellent. If you're listening to a lot of, of the same type of music, you could probably figure out which ones are excellent and which ones are subpar. But, you know, this is the issue I have with things like this. Who says what is good and bad? If somebody likes it, then they like it. It's it's very difficult to be objective when it comes to any sort of artistic thing, uh, especially music and just art in general. So, you know, it's a little bit of a subjective situation here. Um, you know what's excellent? My t-shirt is excellent because it says be excellent to each other. And uh, I was wearing that in the TikTok video if you go look. Perception. Perception implies quick and often sympathetic discernment as of shades of feeling. Shades of feeling. What sort of shade of happiness are you feeling today? Quick and often sympathetic discernment. There's an example. A novelist of keen perception into human motives. They're very good at figuring out humans and what they're thinking and what they might be planning. Penetration implies a searching mind that goes beyond what is obvious or superficial, as in lacks the penetration to see the scorn beneath their friendly smiles. That seems like that should be a quote from somebody, but it is not, supposedly. Um... Okay, so it implies a searching mind that goes beyond what is obvious. So if you have a, a mind that likes to dig into something uh, to figure out what is not right there on the surface that's not very clear, then you have a, you, you, that's penetration. You have a penetrating mind. Um, I don't feel like mine is particularly like that. It's, it seems to sort of stop at what's clear on the surface and doesn't go as deep as it should. Uh, yeah. Um, So the example, again, was lacks the penetration to see the scorn beneath their friendly smiles. So if you do not have a penetrating mind, you might see the friendly smiles and then think, oh, they're cool, they're nice. But actually, they have scorn. Insight suggests depth of discernment coupled with understanding sympathy, as in a documentary providing insight into the plight of the homeless. And yes, we should have some sympathy towards the homeless, the people who do not have homes. Um, And so, insight. I'm trying to think. uh, Insight doesn't necessarily mean that to me. Depth of discernment coupled with understanding sympathy. Hmm. Okay. Acumen implies characteristic penetration combined with keen practical judgment, as in a director of reliable box office acumen. So they just understand the the movies in the box office so good that they regularly churn out movies that make a lot of money. Uh, You know, I think uh, you could call Spielberg a director of reliable box office acumen. Oh, so that was the end of the first word 
Um, we don't have very many words in this episode because there's just a whole lot of information as you have already seen. And so we need to do a sound effect, which is going to be... The next word is the first form of discharge. You can emphasize either syllable. It is a verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive. Number one, to relieve of a charge, load, or burden. I I am relieving you of these things. You do not have to carry this burden or this load or have this charge on you because it's discharge. Uh, And then there's more. 1A, the synonym is unload, as in discharge a cargo ship. Discharge it. Get rid of all the stuff that's on it. All the load that's on the cargo ship, unload it onto the dock, and then we'll figure out what to do. 1B, To release from an obligation. Oh, thank you. I didn't want to do that obligation. That obligation, I I am discharged of that burden. 1C. To release electrical energy from by a discharge. And the example of what this is being released from is a battery or a capacitor. And uh, yeah, you know, electrical things, they have a charge, an electrical charge. So that's why you got to discharge it to release the electrical energy. Maybe it sounds like bzzz. 2A, to let or put off. I guess it's to let off or put off as in discharge passengers. Also as in discharge cargo. The cargo on the ship, maybe there's passengers on the ship, the boat, the plane, the train, the automobile. Let them off. Go, go, live out the rest of your days after you have been discharged. To be, the synonym is shoot, as in discharge an an arrow. Discharge an arrow. Your bow, it was charged in the bow, and then when you let it go, it was discharged. Hopefully, you actually hit the bullseye and not... Something else that shouldn't be hit. 2C, to release from confinement, custody, or care, as in discharge a prisoner, also as in discharge a patient. Any one of those, they're in their care, their custody, they're confined. A prisoner is probably confined or in custody, and the patient is probably in somebody's care. But you can release them from that, and they can be discharged. I think the patient one is the one that I hear with discharge more often than most of the rest of these. I don't usually hear discharge an arrow. Discharge a weapon, I'm sure we're going to see that, but discharge a patient for sure. 2D, to give outlet or vent to. The synonym is emit, as in discharge emotions. And maybe if you're really sad and you're crying, then your emotions are literally being discharged near your eyeballs. 3A1. To dismiss from employment. I think you could also say fire, let go, discharge, all of those things. You, sorry, you cannot be employed here anymore. We are discharging you. 3A2. To release from service or duty, as in, discharge a soldier. Why are you discharging them? Did they do something wrong? Did they discharge their weapon at somebody? 3B. To get rid of by performing an appropriate action. So the thing that you are getting rid of is a debt or an obligation, And the example of the action, the appropriate action that you are taking, is payment. So you're just, you're discharging your debt with the act of paying. Bye-bye debt, I have discharged you. 3C is to set aside, and the synonym is annul. And I don't usually think of annul as setting aside, but I guess you can. 3D, to order 
to end consideration of a bill in order to bring it before the House for action. And the example of uh, what where this order is going to is a legislative committee. So the order to the legislative committee to end consideration of a bill um, is is to discharge. You they cannot they cannot discuss this bill anymore. No no. Number four, to bear and distribute. And the example of what I guess you are bearing or distributing is the weight of a wall above an opening. So, okay, I'm trying to think about this because I'm no contractor or architect. So maybe above like a doorway or an arch, the weight of the wall above that, you have to discharge it because otherwise it's going to be too heavy for the thing. Uh, You have to distribute the weight Hmm, that one takes a little bit of extra thought. Five, to bleach out or remove in dyeing and printing textiles, and the thing that you are bleaching out or removing is color or dye. So I guess if you put in some color or dye and you don't want it to be there, uh, or or maybe you're going for some sort of effect, then you can discharge the color or the dye to uh, to get rid of it. Six, to cancel the record of the loan of, <laughs> of the loan of, um, upon return. And the example is a library book. If you are, so is it cancel the record of the loan? So if you don't want any record of this library book ever being loaned out, uh, you are discharging it. Hmm, yep. That's, a, that's another thinker. Never heard that before. Because I don't work in a library, contrary to common belief. Here is intransitive. 1A, to throw off or deliver a load, charge, or burden. Very similar to before. 1B, to release electrical energy by a discharge. Again, very similar to what we read before. 2A, The synonyms are go off and fire, and this is used of a gun. So yes, firing your weapon, that is a discharge. It's all charged up and ready to go, and then boom, the the gun goes off. It has been discharged. 2B, the synonyms are spread and run, as in some dies discharge. So, yeah, I guess that's sort of similar to, to to discharging the color or the dye to get rid of it in some way. But in this case, it's just the colors spread and run. And that's also discharge. 2C, to pour forth fluid or other contents. Hmm. So, if I'm pouring milk in cereal, am I discharging the milk? A synonym for everything is the word perform. Hmm, that's uh, that's not what I would expect here. Dischargeable is an adjective. Dischargee is a noun. And discharger is also a noun. Uh, Let's see. This is from Latin dis plus caracare, which means to load. And there's more at the word charge. So I guess if you... If you just are loading up a thing, that's called a charge, like a load, a burden on on your back, on a donkey. Uh, what are other loads that can be loaded up? I guess an electrical energy, it can be loaded up with electricity. A weapon, an arrow has been loaded into a bow. Mm, let's see, the, the pr- prisoners are loaded into a prison, patients are loaded into a hospital, uh, let's see, the passengers and cargo are loaded onto a ship or a plane, yeah, so anything loaded up to undo the loading, you have to discharge. All right, let's move on to the next word, which uh, the sound effect was something like, <laughs> okay, second form of discharge, Noun from the 14th century, 1A. So, the last one was the verb, this is the noun. 1A, the act of relieving, 
of something that oppresses, and the synonym is release. Discharge the hounds. 1B. Something that discharges or releases, especially a certification of release or payment. Something that discharges or releases just anything that just discharges is a discharge. I feel like it's either the words or myself or both that um, I just don't, there's not much to say. I don't feel inspired by a lot of this. I don't know. We just have to get through these these sections of words sometimes. It's fine. Okay, so number two, the state of being discharged or relieved. So maybe if you are a patient who is being discharged, you are a discharge. Uh, Three, the act of discharging or unloading. It's the noun, it's the discharge. You're discharging the discharge. Four, legal release from confinement. That is probably for the prisoner. Five, a firing off. And that would be discharging a weapon. So when you fire the weapon, that is a discharge. Six, A, A flowing or issuing out, as in a discharge of spores. The mushroom has been loaded up with spores, and then all of a sudden they go, and there is a discharge of spores. Also, for that one, a rate of flow. So the amount, the the rate of the flowing of the thing is also the discharge. 6B, something that is emitted as in a purulent, now I don't know how to say that word, a purulent discharge. Purulent, purulent, something like that. It's just the thing that has been emitted from another thing. It's a discharge. Seven, the act of removing an obligation or liability. Uh, Yeah, it's it's a discharge, getting rid of it. 8A, release or dismissal, especially from an office or employment. As you can see, these are all very similar to the ones in the verb form. They're just the noun form. So when you fire somebody, uh, that is a discharge. 8B, complete separation from military service. They have been discharged. 9A, the equalization of of a difference of electric potential between two points. Uh, Well, you know, we know that uh, electricity can be discharged because it has been loaded up with electricity. So I guess between when uh, the electricity goes from one point to another or something, uh, that is a discharge. And 9B, the conversion of the chemical energy of a battery into electrical energy. So many ways to use the word discharge, and I said that word so many times. Okay, let's move on to... (laughs) Discharge lamp. Two words, noun from 1933. An electric lamp in which an enclosed gas or vapor glows or causes a phosphor coating on the lamp's inner surface to glow. So either the gas or the vapor glows, or there is a phosphor coating in the lamp, and the uh, the stuff inside will make that glow. Either way, it's electric, it's electric, and it is glowing. It's the 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 discharge. What is discharging here? The 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 light from the thing, the glow. Is that the discharge? Hmm. I don't know. It's kind of a funny name to me, but that's just me, because I didn't live in 1933. It's a discharge lamp, and uh, maybe we'll post a picture of a discharge lamp on social media, at Dictionary Pod. We have one more word for this episode. Discharge tube, noun from 1898. An electron tube which contains gas or vapor at low pressure and through which conduction takes place 
when a high voltage is applied. Conduction. It's being conducted when there is a high voltage and something happens in this discharge tube. All right, those were all the words. Discharge tube was the last one. I'm so sorry. There's no more today. So we had discernment, discharge, discharge, discharge lamp, and discharge tube. I think I'm just going to pick discharge lamp as the word of the episode because it glows. And who doesn't like something that glows? That's so cool, man. My discharge lamp glows when you put in the gas and the vapor and it is all on fire and it glows. Wait, how does it work? It causes, I don't know how, it's electric. Discharge lamp, discharge lamp, discharge lamp glows and glows. All right, my nose is all stuffed up, so I sound funny, and it's late, and I'm tired. Discharge lamp, discharge lamp. I don't know what to do with these songs, especially this one. Okay, that's fine. Maybe the next one will have a better song and better words and a better Spencer. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Should we talk like this the whole time? I am Spencer. I am reading the dictionary to you. Oh, this is such a fun, fun thing to do. But somebody has to do it. Okay, I may not talk like that the whole time. The first word in this episode is, I think it's pronounced disky. It's a prefix, D-I-S-C-I, and it just says, see the prefix D-I-S-C, which we had a couple episodes ago, maybe three, and uh, yeah, the prefix disc was also disky or disco, and it means either disc or phonograph record. So we are going to have a handful of disky words um, in this episode. Not, Not a lot, actually. And um, and uh, we'll see if any of those are related to discs. Okay, that was a very short first word, other than yesterday, which had a very long first word, and a long second word, and a long third word. Um, so we need to do a sound effect. Should we do? Should we do? What should we do? We'll do. Ooh. The next word is disiform. So it's not disky. It's just disa or disy, depending on the context. Disiform, adjective from 1830, round or oval in shape. And so, yes, this is probably the, the disc. It means disc, essentially. A round or oval is probably a disc. Ooh. The next word is disciple. Now, I don't think this one is related to discs at all. But, you know, we've been surprised before. Let's find out. Noun from before the 12th century. One. One who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another. Just anybody. Doesn't have to be a, a Jesus-y person or whoever. But if you if somebody is saying something and uh, some people are spreading that information, uh, then they would be disciples. Maybe I'm a disciple of the dictionary. And you can too. 1A. Uh, so it was, uh, number one was one who accepted and assist in spreading the doctrines of another as 1A. One of the twelve in the inner circle of Christ's followers according to the gospel accounts. Christ had twelve disciples according to this thing. 1B is a convinced adherent of a school or individual. So the school, the thought of teaching the the individual has convinced people to to follow them, to follow their teachings. 2 is capitalized. A member of the Disciples of Christ founded in the U.S. in 1809 that holds the Bible alone to be the rule of faith and practice, usually baptized, uh, baptizes by immersion, and has a congregational polity. 
Okay, so I guess this is an organization from 1809 called the Disciples of Christ, and the people who are members are called Disciple or Disciples, and I don't know if they still exist. I personally cannot endorse this whatsoever because it says that the Bible alone is the rule of faith and practice, and I just have so many issues with that. I, where do I even begin? Uh, the synonym for everything is the word follower. Come, follow me. Let's not follow the Bible and let's follow other things like science and smartness and common sense. Okay, discipleship is a noun. Put all the disciples on a ship and send it out into sea. Okay, the etymology, um, this is from the Latin discipulus, discipulus, which says that that is a follower of Jesus Christ in his lifetime, but it doesn't break down the word anymore. Like, how does that one word mean that whole thing? It does also say that it's from Latin... I don't know if it's also discipulus or if it's a different word, but it means pupil. Maybe that word means pupil. Hmm. Okay. Maybe it's pupil of Jesus Christ. Maybe that's where the D-I-S-C-I comes in. Anyway, it's a pupil. It's a studier. It's a student. It's the one who is learning the stuff from something else. Okay. I think that's enough for disciple. Let's move on to... Ooh, disciplinable or disciplinable. You can emphasize the third syllable or the first syllable. Disciplinable, adjective from the 15th century. One, synonyms are docile and teachable. Hmm, docile and teachable do not seem like the same thing. I can be teachable that doesn't mean I'm going to be docile or calm. I mean, it helps if you're docile to sit and learn and listen, but they don't, they can be separate. Number two, subject to or deserving discipline. Huh, 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 huh. So that's what we're, as in a disciplinable offense, offense, a disciplinable offense. Um, Okay, so if you are disciplined... Now, it, I would think that if you are disciplinable, that you are not docile necessarily because maybe you are doing a lot of things and you need to be disciplined. And so I that feels like the opposite of docile. But if teachable, that one, that one makes more sense because if you can be disciplined, then you are able to learn and change and be teachable. Okay, it's kind of an interesting word there with interesting uses. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The next word is disciplinarian. Noun from 1639. One who disciplines or enforces order. There's always, there's, there's usually one, maybe one parent or somebody, an adult in somebody's life who tends to be the disciplinarian. Uh, because, you know, that's just sort of how it usually ends up. Uh, stereotypically, it's the man, but I feel like we're seeing a change. Um, mm, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, there's a, there's, there's gender questions, and I, I don't want to get too far into that. Um, you know, different opinions. Anyway, but, you know, very, very stereotypically, uh, yeah, I think to, like, my parents generation and stuff it was all usually the the, the dad that who was the adult disciplinarian disciplining and being the disciplinarian um but you know i think it's good i think it's good to get uh have both well depends on how many parents you got you got one two three four whoever doesn't matter but i think it's good if everybody is a little bit of a disciplinarian maybe one person likes to discipline with these topics, but then another person likes to dis discipline with other things. So, you know, 
But you know, and then if you get too far, if you're too much of a disciplinarian, that can be a little tough. That can be maybe too far. You got to find some balance. Disciplinarian is also an adjective. Who? Disciplinary. Disciplinary, and the British will say disciplinary. This is an adjective from 1598, 1A, of or relating to discipline, as in disciplinary problems. These are problems that must be disciplined. 1B, designed to correct or punish breaches of discipline, as in took disciplinary action. Oh, we there's a we got to do some disciplining. Dis- disciplining is that a word? Disciplining. I don't even know if that's a word. Let's see. Is it in here? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna come up to that in a bit. We got to do some disciplining because we must do. We like to punish. Number two, of or relating to a particular field of study, as in disciplinary specialization. So this one is different from what we have been mostly talking about, which is, you know, disciplining, teaching somebody, maybe being a little bit forceful. Uh, but this is, you know, you are being very disciplined in your in your studies. And uh, yeah, we're going to get more information for discipline and the, all the different ways that it can be used in just a few seconds. So disciplinarily is an adverb. And disciplinarity, or maybe it's disciplinarity, that is a noun. The next word is the first form of discipline, noun from the 13th century. Would have been good to read these before we got into all these other discipline words. So, number one, the synonym is punishment. Do we need... To discipline you. Did you do something bad? We need to punish you. Um, You know, when we were kids, spankings would be pretty common. Uh, You know, even people my age and a lot of people older, there was the the discipline was a lot more harsh. Um, Maybe there were belts involved or other things. And uh, people who went to Catholic school, they would have a whole range of ways to be disciplined. And I'm very lucky that I didn't have any of those. Number two is obsolete. The synonym is instruction. So just uh, instructing somebody to do a thing, that's a discipline. Three, a field of study. What is your discipline? What are you disciplined in studying? What are you... What's your instruction? Number four, training that corrects, molds, or perf- perfects the mental faculties or moral character. I mean, this is just kind of what it all comes down to. Uh, you know, if... Uh, oh, so, so we look at punishment. That's one way to discipline somebody. If they did something wrong, you discipline them with some sort of punishment. Let's just say a spanking on the booty. Um, and the, the idea is that they won't do it anymore. Hopefully, we'll see. But then... There's just the more overarching idea of training somebody. So I think of I think of a parent, maybe stereotypically from a movie, a parent who's in the military, and so they want to discipline their kid, uh, or say your kid needs some discipline. Okay, what's that discipline? It's just the idea of of teaching them, molding them to be uh, a certain have a certain type of moral character, character or mental faculties, you know. Uh, making their bed a certain way, cleaning the house. Uh, just all of that is is part of discipline. 5A, control gained by forcing obedience or order. Control by enforcing obedience or order. So I guess if you are forcing somebody to be obedient, uh, then you have gained control and you have discipline over them. Uh, 5B, Orderly or prescribed conduct or pattern of behavior. 5C, the synonym is self-control. Hoo-hoo, that's hard. That's hard to be 
disciplined when there is some tasty, unhealthy food around. Ugh, that's a that's a difficult discipline to teach yourself. I'm working on it. Number six, a rule or system of rules governing conduct or activity. Disciplinal or disciplinal? I think it's disciplinal. That is an adjective. Let's see. Uh, so this is from the Latin disciplina, which means teaching or learning. And again, it is from disi- disipulus. I think that's the word. Disipulus or discipulus, which means pupil. So yes, it's just it's all about being a pupil and learning from something else and then also teaching. It can go both ways. Next word. Ooh. It is the second form of discipline, which is a transitive verb from the 14th century. One, to punish or penalize for the sake of discipline. If if you're doing, yeah, here's where we see disciplining. You got to do some disciplining to discipline the people. Two, to train or develop by instruction and exercise, especially in self-control. Oh, I am training myself not to eat the unhealthy food. I am developing by instruction and exercise to exercise more. Trying to discipline my brain and my body. 3A, to bring under control. And the example of what you are bringing under control is a group, as in discipline troops. 3B, To impose order upon, as in, serious writers discipline and refine their writing styles. So, uh, let's see, to impose order upon, hmm. I would think of this as being, uh, you know, you, you are very disciplined in writing often and working on your style and figuring out what your voice is. And, uh, and you're, I guess you're imposing some sort of order upon yourself to write a lot. A synonym for all are the words punish and teach. Punish and teach. Yes, those are similar, but also I feel like, can't you teach without punishing? And are you necessarily teaching when you punish? I mean, depending on the context, yes, these are both good synonyms, but it's hard for them to go hand in hand in my mind. Hopefully if you are punishing somebody or teaching, but I think that you can also teach and not have to punish. Discipliner is a noun. Ooh. All right. My my nose is rather stuffed, so uh, I may get through the rest of this a little on the quicker side. The next word is disciplined. Adjective from the 14th century, marked by or possessing discipline, as in a disciplined mind. I am very disciplined in doing this podcast. It feels like, I don't know, is it worth it? I hope you think it is. I'm going to keep on going. Let's see what happens. Woo! Next is disc jockey. Two words. You can spell disc with a C or a K. Noun from 1941 because they're the disc jockey because they're playing the discs. It is an announcer of a radio show of popular recorded music. Also, one who plays recorded music for dancing at a nightclub or party. So, I have a little bit of an issue with the first part of this, which is, it's not necessarily popular recorded music. Um, it, it might not be popular at all. Maybe nobody's ever heard of it before. Uh, but yes, an announcer... And also, it might not be on a radio show. It might be some sort of other thing. Uh, usually, it's a radio show. I guess if you're playing music on a podcast, you're not a disc jockey. Anyway, you're talking about the music and you're playing the music. And then, if you're playing it live for people who will probably be dancing to it, you are a disc jockey, also a DJ. Ooh! Next is Disclaim. Verb from the 15th century starting with intransitive. 
1. To make a disclaimer. 2a is obsolete. To disavow all part or share. 2b. To utter denial. Like you are uttering it out loud, maybe? Here's transitive number 1. To renounce a legal claim to. 2. Synonyms are deny and disavow, as in disclaimed any knowledge of the contents of the letter. Uh, they deny, they don't, they don't have any knowledge. They claim that they don't know nothing about what's in the letter. Ooh! Next is disclaimer. Noun from the 15th century, 1a. A denial or disavowal of legal claim. Also, relinquishment of or formal refusal to accept an interest or estate. 1b. A writing that embodies a legal disclaimer. 2a. Synonyms are denial and disavowal, similar to what we saw before. And 2b. The synonym is repudiation. Uh, let's see. Legal disclaimer. I don't know. Disclaimer. What what do we got to say about disclaimers? Uh, I don't know. Probably nothing. Let's move on. Ooh. Disclamation. Noun from 1592. The synonyms are renunciation and disavowal. Next. Ooh. Oh. Disclimax. Noun from 1935, a relatively stable ecological community, often including kinds of organisms foreign to the region and displacing the climax because of disturbance, especially by humans. Hmm. I don't fully understand this. Uh, a relatively stable ecological community that has a bunch of different kinds of organisms that are not part of the region. They're foreign to the region and displacing the climax. So I think I'm confused about the definition of climax in this context. Uh, so maybe we should just do a quick little look back at the word climax. I mean, you know, I automatically think of climax as being like the culmination of a thing, of a story... Um, but, you know, there must be something else that I just don't remember. Let's see. Well, there's a couple forms. Yeah, culmination. Uh, let's see, the point of highest dramatic tension. Uh, relative. Oh, here. A relatively stable ecological stage or community, especially of plants that is achieved through successful adaptation to an environment, especially the final stage in ecological succession. All right, well, maybe we need to put a link in the show notes because uh, I just think it's this is an interesting idea. I feel like I should know a little bit more about this. Ooh. The last word is the first form of disclose. D-I-S-C-L-O-S-E. This one is... It's a transitive verb from the 14th century. Number one is obsolete. To open up. <laughs> yes, I, that makes sense. Um, disclose. It's the opposite of close. So it's open. You're opening a thing up. You're disclosing. Hey, go disclose the refrigerator door. I want to get some food out of there. 2A. To expose to view. It was closed, and you have opened it up to view. To be is archaic. The synonym is hatch. H-A-T-C-H. And to see, to make known or public, as in, demands that politicians disclose the sources of their income. Ooh, I like that idea. I, I want lots of things political things to be disclosed, legal things. We need to see what is going on. I never really thought about the um, the etymology of this word. I mean, before I even read it, it's pretty obvious it's the opposite of closed. It's open. You're opening up, opening it up. If it was closed 
to public view. You Now it is not. It has been disclosed. It has been opened. So, what does the etymology actually say? It is from Anglo-French, desclore, which means to open, unlock, or reveal. It is from the Latin dis plus claudere, which means to close. And there's more of the word close. So yes, dis added to close, which was pretty obvious. All right, let's reread these words. Uh, so then I can go blow my nose and maybe take more allergy medication. I don't know. We had dissy, disiform, disciple, disciplinable, disciplinarian, disciplinary, discipline, discipline, disciplined, disc jockey, disclaim, disclaimer, disclamation, disclimax, and disclose. I think I'm just going to pick disc jockey as the word of the episode because that's the one that I like the best. I think it would be kind of fun to be a disc jockey. I never did it. But uh, yeah, you know, just, just playing the music for the people that you like. That would be fun. I'm a disc jockey. I'm playing the music. I'm singing a song of disc jockey and I'm jockeying the disc from one thing to another disc jockey. Okay, that was fine. That was perfectly fine. Let's end this right now. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I am Spencer, your host, and I am very grateful that you have joined me on this dictionary journey. Uh, yeah, you, if you haven't uh, done this, you should probably go start at the beginning because that is the way everything should be consumed. The first word in this episode is the second form of disclose. D-I-S-C-L-O-S-E. It has nothing to do with the clothes that you put on your body, if you choose to do that. Disclose is a noun from 1548. This one is obsolete, and the synonym is disclosure. Which, uh, which is coming up very soon in this very episode. Um, so the previous version, the previous form of disclose was verb. This, the only version of the way that, the, that it was used as a noun is, is obsolete. We don't use it anymore. Uh, you may ask, what is disclosure? We'll, we'll tell you in a minute. But before that, we have to make a sound effect and then we have to talk about a different word. So the sound effect will be, hoo-hoo. The next word is disclosing. Adjective from 1965, being or using an agent that contains a usually red dye that stains dental plaque. Uh, And the example of this agent is a tablet or a liquid. Ooh, I think I remember this when I was a kid. Uh, you know, elementary school age, I remember that the people would come in, the dental people, and they would teach you how to floss and teach you about dental health and all that stuff. And that that's probably what got me to be, you know, to take pretty good care of my teeth. Um, and I do vaguely remember there was something that you would put in your mouth, probably this tablet, and it would stain your teeth. And I guess in this case, at least, it shows you where the plaque is and I don't remember specifically if the one that we had showed you where the plaque was or if it was something different but it must have been this do kids still do this is this is this a thing do you do we do this this disclosing it discloses where the plaque is this seems like a funny name though um it's not called a disclosing but it is a what would you say it's a disclosing tablet a disclosing liquid Hmm, interesting. Maybe I'll do a little research and put it in the show notes, see if they're still doing this. If you have kids, you can also let me know. Email, phone number, it's all in the show notes. Woohoo! The next word is disclosure. So this is the thing that we use, I guess, do we even use this word? Um, But the synonym, this was a synonym for disclose. Uh, So, disclosure is a noun from 1567. One, the act or an instance of disclosing. 
and the synonym is exposure. So I guess that's the same thing. If something is exposed to the elements, it has been disclosed. Uh, number two, something disclosed. And the synonym is revelation. Oh, I have a revelation. I'm going to tell you all about it. It will be a disclosure. Uh, let's see. So, I mean, I guess disclose. A disclose is also a disclosure, which is just an act or an instance of disclosing. Woohoo! The next word is disco. First form. Noun from 1964, number one. A nightclub for dancing to live and recorded music. Maybe there's a DJ, a disc jockey uh, playing, playing the music, or maybe there's a band playing music live. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a nightclub. I mean, I think typically these days we think that it would be uh, playing disco music, but not necessarily. I mean, you can go to a disco and they can play all sorts of music, I would assume. I don't go to discos. I don't really do the live dancing thing, although it is fun and it is a good workout. So I urge you all to do it. Get out of your comfort zone and go to a disco. Um, I will say that a uh, future episode, which one is it? Uh, three episodes from now uh, has the word discotheque because this word is just short for discotheque. And uh, I tried to make a sort of uh, uh, disco drum beat sound effect, uh, which I don't think it worked very well. I could have done it in this episode too, but I'm recording it later and uh, I didn't think of it. Number two for disco. Popular dance music characterized by hypnotic rhythm, repetitive lyrics, and electronically produced sounds. Does it have to have electronically produced sounds? Um, I mean, does that mean synthesizer? Does that mean like an electric guitar would be considered electronically produced sounds? Basically, you're saying no acoustic instruments are allowed. There has to be at least some electronic instruments, I guess. Uh, hypnotic rhythm. Repetitive lyrics. That's a good one. They say that they sing the same lyrics over and over again. Uh, of course, I cannot think of any disco songs. Oh, maybe uh, like Ring My Bell. Ring my bell, ring my bell. Yeah, I think that's a pretty repetitive song. Okay, let's, uh, that's it for disco. First form, let's say, woohoo. The second form of disco is an intransitive verb from 1979, and this is to dance to disco music. Let's go discoing at the disco. How did the noun disco... No, no. How did the verb to disco... How did that not come about for, for another 15 years after the place where you go discoing? That seems a little odd, don't you think? Now, if we look at the disco prefix, which... No, wait a minute. The disc prefix, that's what I mean. Uh, or disc or dissy. Um, it means uh, just, uh, you know, thing related to like phonographs or records or that sort of thing. So is that where discotheque comes from? Um, yeah, but it doesn't... I guess it... I guess... Yeah, I mean, this is a sneak peek to three episodes from now. It's from disc, uh, which means disc or record. So I guess they were like, hey... This is a place where you dance to music on records or on discs. So that's why we're going to call it a discotheque. The music is disco music because it's played on records, on albums, on vinyls, LPs. Um, seems like kind of a funny way to name a, a type of music. Woohoo! The next word is disco prefix. It just says go see the prefix that is spelled D I S C because it's disc, dissy, and disco. They're all the same. It depends on what comes afterwards of which which version you're going to use. Woohoo! The next word is discographer. It's disco and then grapher, but you pronounce it 
discographer. Noun from 1941, a person who compiles discographies. And what is that? Woohoo! Discography. Noun from 1933, 1. A descriptive list of recordings by category, composer, performer, or date of release. If you want to listen to all the albums of a certain band uh, or artist or whoever, you're going to go look at their discography. What discs, what recordings have they released? Full albums, compilations, singles, EPs, etc. There's probably other ones that I can't think of right now. But yeah, you want to know what their discography is. What's the al- the name of the albums? What year did they come out? Uh, maybe who who performed on those albums? All those things are really important to know about the discography of an artist. Um, I just started listening to the band Sparks because they did all the music, and I think they essentially wrote the movie Annette, which we just watched recently. And um, I had been hearing a lot about them because of the documentary that came out, and I had not heard of them before that. But they have been making music for 50, no, more than 50 years, and... They seem like really interesting musicians and uh, songwriters. And just because they're called Sparks and my uh, my first uh, name is S, it's Spencer. And so the S and then my last name is Parks and Sparks and I'm Sparks. And I had a rabbit named Sparks when I was a kid. And so I feel like, ooh, I should probably listen to these guys. It seems like the universe is telling me to listen to them. So... Uh, I just started listening to their discography from the beginning, and I'm only like one album in. But, uh, you know, so far, so good. I mean, I I love all music, so I know I'm going to like it. Two, the history of recorded music. The entire history of recorded music is the discography. Just all of it. Everything. All the stuff. Which... I mean, I guess this is just the word that we're stuck with because it's it all used to be on discs. But, you know, these days you can still buy CDs. There are even some people who are releasing cassette tapes and 8-tracks and obviously records, albums, vinyl have, have come back and those are discs. Uh, but, you know, it's all digital. It's mostly all digital. I do like the physical thing, though. So I guess I guess discography does make sense. Discog no discographical or discographic that is an adjective and discographically is an adverb. Woohoo! The next word is discoid. D I S C O I D. Adjective from 1794. One, relating to or having a disc. Do you have a disc? Then you are discoid. As 1A, situated in the floral disc, as in discoid florets or florets. Where's the, what's the floral disc? Is that the part of the flower where the petals are? And then they've got the, the part in the center where there's like the seeds or the pollen and, uh, I mean, maybe that whole thing is the is discoid. 1B, having only disc flowers, as in a discoid flower head. So the, the petals, uh, the petals make up a disc shape. And so if a plant of flower only has that thing with all the petals at the top that make a disc, I guess the, that would be discoid. Because sometimes maybe they got flowers on other parts of the plant. I don't really know how this works. I don't know my plant stuff. Number two, flat and circular like a disc. It is discoid, shaped like a disc. Uh, The etymology is nothing too too helpful. Uh The next word is discoidal. So they have added an A-L to the end of discoid. Adjective from circa 1706, of resembling or producing a disc. 
This is similar to discoid. They're both adjectives relating to it, resembling it, producing it, all those things. You could probably use discoid or discoidal in most circumstances. When do you use this other than flowers or something that's literally shaped like a disc? That vinyl, that vinyl record is discoidal or discoid. Moving on. Woohoo! Discoidal cleavage. Two words, noun from circa 1909. Miroblastic cleavage in which a disc of cells is produced at the animal pole of the zygote. And the example of, I guess, this kind of zygote is in bird eggs. So, let's see, let's see, what what was going on here? In bird eggs, this is what it, this is a thing that happens in bird eggs. There's a disc of cells at the animal pole. Well, I believe maybe the animal pole is the part of the egg, the end of the egg where the animal grows from and cleavage is about splitting and so when an animal is growing the cells split to to reproduce themselves um i don't totally understand what this disc of cells is why is it disc related do they do all zygotes have a disc that part i'm not i'm a little confused about i feel like i need to see a picture or a chart or something so maybe i'll either post something on social media or put a link in the show notes or both Woohoo! Discolor is next. Verb from the 14th century starting with transitive to alter or change the hue or color of. I don't like that color. Let's change it. Let's repaint the room. Let's discolor it from one color to another color. Please and thank you. Intransitive is to change color, especially for the worse. So, let's see. Uh, The etymology doesn't really say anything about it being for the worse, other than the fact that we're using the dis prefix, which tends to make something feel like more of the opposite or negative a lot of the times. Um, So, this is Latin discolor, which means of another color. That's pretty much all that we've got here. But yeah, changing it for the worse. Ooh, discolor. I like a discolor. Ooh, hoo-hoo discoloration a discoloration usually i think has a negative connotation to it it's not the color that you want a discoloration is a noun from 1642 one the act of discoloring and also the state of being discolored two a discolored spot or formation <laughs> it's a formation uh the synonym is stain Oh, I have, still currently have, and have had many in my life, many stains on shirts and pants, and who knows how they got there. They are discolored forever. I have had to get rid of things that I may not have wanted to get rid of because they had a discoloration. Mm, It's very frustrating. I don't know how it happens. I'm clumsy, usually. That's probably it. I have a nice hoodie that I like. Uh, It's older, but it has a big old stain on it, so I don't really wear it. But I don't want to get rid of it. I just can't wear it out in public. Hoo-hoo! The next word is such a good word. Discombobulate. D-I-S-C-O-M-B-O-B-U-L-A-T-E. Discombobulate transitive verb from circa 1916 the synonyms are upset and confuse as in inventing cool new ways to discombobulate the old order that is a quote from kurt anderson and kurt spells their name with a k discombobulation is a noun Uh, this would be a good word to figure out backwards uh, there, are, I have a, a handful of videos on YouTube where I teach you how to say backwards words. Um, I did record a new one where I say a phrase, but I realized that um, 
I, I, I sort of I missed a part in the video that I kind of wanted to record. Don't know if I will, but hopefully someday I'll, that'll be maybe video number 16. Uh, discombobulate. I love this word. It's It says it's probably an alternative of discompose. How it became discombobulate, I will never know. Probably. Uh, maybe we'll check that Etym Online website to see if we can get some additional etymology information, because I sure would love to know. It's uh, It seems too specific. Discombobulate. Did somebody just make up this word and then it became part of everything? Upset and confuse. Uh, everything feels discombobulated. Sometimes you yourself can feel discombobulated. The world sometimes... Yes, I don't know. It's just a good word. It's a really good word to throw into your normal, everyday conversation. You might sound, hoo-hoo. The next word is discomfit. Discomfit, or in uh, the more southern areas in America, they say discomfit. Discomfit or discomfit. D-I-S-C-O-M-F-I-T, first form. It is a transitive verb from the 13th century. Number 1A is archaic, to defeat in battle. Hmm, okay, we'll, we'll see what the, uh, the etymology says. We can figure this all out later. 1B, I don't know if this one is also archaic. To frustrate the plans of, and the synonym is thwart. I do like the usage of the word frustrate here. Ah, oh, my plans got thwarted. That is so frustrating. I'm so frustrated that my plans got thwarted. Two, to put into a state of perplexity and embarrassment. The synonym is dis disconcert. I think that's how you would emphasize that word disconcert. Another synonym is the word embarrass. And uh, discomfittingly is an adverb, discomfitingly or discomfittingly. You can emphasize either one depending on if you're from the South or not. Uh, let's see. Did I? I'm trying to figure out, uh, is, the, is my guest coming up? Yes, you haven't heard that one yet. Um, I thought that there was something embarrassed. I believe embarrassed came up when I recorded with Chris Show. Uh, that episode will air in about a week. Uh, I think embarrassed came up there, and we were like, this is not the context of the embarrassed that I think of, so we're thinking that there might be another definition of embarrassed that we couldn't think of. And I think this one is fitting into that, too. So the etymology says this is from the... Anglo-French verb disconfire, which is from dis plus confire, which means to prepare. So, uh, I mean, it's the opposite of prepare. Something has been prepared, and then you discomfit it, and you have unprepared it. You have thwarted, frustrated the plans that were well prepared. Uh, putting something into a state of perplexity and embarrassment, um... Yes, I guess I guess everything was, was was all nice and neat and ordered and prepared, and then you did the opposite of that. Hoo hoo. The next word is, well, it's the same word, so you can probably pronounce it the same ways. Discomfit, uh, second form noun from the fifteenth century, and the synonym is our next word. Hoo hoo. Discomfiture discomfiture, discomfiture, or discomfiture, D-I-S-C-O-M-F-I-T-U-R-E, noun from the 14th century, the act of discomfiting. Now, how do you say that word? Dis discom discomfiting. Um, also, the state of being discomfited. I have never heard this word used, this th discomfiture or discomfort, uh, but basically it's just th throwing a thing into chaos. It's discombobulating a thing, basically. Hmm, interesting. Uh, okay, we have one more word for this episode, two forms, 
Woohoo! Discomfort, first form, transitive verb from the 14th century. Number one is archaic. It is the number one definition for the word dismay. Two, to make uncomfortable or uneasy. Ooh, please don't do that to me. I don't like to be made uncomfortable or uneasy. Don't put me in a state of discomfort. Discomfortable. 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 That's an adjective. Uh, yeah, it's just the opposite of comfort or to comfort. To, to make uncomfortable. The last word is the second form of discomfort. Noun from the 14th century. Number one is archaic. The synonyms are distress and grief. Two, mental or physical uneasiness. And the synonym is annoyance. I feel like annoyance is way more calm than mental or physical uneasiness. Uh, yeah, don't, not a big fan of being discomfort, discomfortable, uncomfortable. All right, so I'm going to reread the words we had. Disclose, disclosing, disclosure, disco, 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 discographer, discography, discoid, discoidal, discoidal cleavage, discolor, discoloration, discombobulate, discom, dis, uh, pad, hoop, hip, discomfit, discomfit, discomfiture, discomfort, discomfort. I believe I just have to pick discombobulate as the word of the episode. Uh, but you know, discomfit, that was a good one to learn. And, uh, you know, anything disco related, the music, the place to dance, discographer, discography. I liked all those as well. Discombobulate, discombobulate. The song is discombobulated. Discombobulate, discombobulate, discombobulate. That is going to be the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, as always, please and forever listen to my podcast and share it all over the place. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Sorry, I had to go check a thing. I'm doing a TikTok video because I am recording this on New Year's Eve 2022, and there are some wonderful uh, sparkly pinky balloons for 2023 going around my face. Yay, happy New Year. It's just another day. I mean, really, it really just is. It's another cold, wintry day in the Northern Hemisphere. The first word in this episode is... Discommend, D-I-S-C-O-M-M-E-N-D. Transitive verb from the 15th century. Should we get this down so I can look at it? Uh, number one, the synonyms are disapprove and disparage. Ooh. Okay, go look at the TikTok. I'm going to end this video and post it. Okay, number two for discommend. To cause to be viewed unfavorably. Hmm. I don't I don't love this word to be you so are you disapproving or being disapproved of? To cause to be viewed unfavorably. So yeah, I guess if you are uh, doing a thing that is gonna make people disapprove of you or make people view you unfavorably, you are discommending. I don't want to do any of those things. Nope. Okay. Uh, let's see. We've got to do a sound effect. And I guess because today is uh, the, the day that I'm recording this on is New Year's Eve. Uh, we'll do a we'll do like a did I do one of these last year? I probably did. That was a terrible sound. We'll go. <laughs> I'm sure we could have done something better. Uh, let me do a quick little count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What I could do is do a countdown. Uh, let's see. This is taking a lot of thought. One, two, one, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I could have figured this out beforehand. Okay, the sound effect is going to be 11. The next word is discommode. Transitive verb from 1678. To cause inconvenience to. And the synonym is trouble. To cause inconvenience to another thing. So, uh, you know, if there's some traffic, construction, something like that, if a child is just being inconvenient, they are discommoding. Uh, this is from French discommoder, which is from dis plus commode, which means convenient. And there's more at the word commode. And I'm really curious because wasn't isn't a commode like a like a toilet? And was it called a commode because it is very convenient? Uh, let's just do a quick little look back to C O M M O O D E. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Uh, chest of draw. Oh, it's not a bat. Oh, yeah. Chamber pot. Chamber pot. Yes. I do kind of remember this. The chamber pot is very convenient. And uh, so that's why it's called a commode. So if, if something is being made not convenient, as discommode. Um, okay, I think that's it for that one. Ten. The next word is discompose. Discompose. Transitive verb from the 15th century. One. To destroy the composure of. There's no more composure to speak of. It has been destroyed. What? The composure of what? I guess your your emotional composure? If you break down and ball, then maybe you have been discomposed? Number two, to disturb the order of. Everything was in a wonderful order. It was composed nicely, and it all got dis, uh, disturbed. Discomposure... P-O-S-U-R-E, that is a noun, and we have synonym information. There's a lot of them. Discompose, disquiet, disturb, perturb, agitate, upset, and fluster mean to destroy capacity for collected thought or decisive action. Discompose implies some degree of loss of self-control or or self-confidence, especially through emotional stress. Yeah, like I, I had mentioned, the the crying situation. You you maybe had some self-control and self-confidence, and then something happened, and you lost all of it. There's an example. Discomposed by the loss of his beloved wife. I would be more than discomposed if I lost my beloved wife. Sharon, I would be, there's not even a word to describe that. Let's not think about that. Let's move on to the next synonym, which is disquiet suggests loss of sense of security or peace of mind, as in the disquieting news of factories closing. Uh, loss of sense of security or peace of mind. So everything was nice and quiet and oh, it was just status quo, everything was great and fine, and then it changed, and we got rid of all of the quiet. It has been disquieted. Disturb implies interference with one's mental processes caused by worry, perplexity, or interruption, as in, the discrepancy in accounts disturbed me. My mental processes got all worried and perplexed or interrupted uh yeah this is like whoa i can't i can't handle i can't handle what's going on i'm very disturbed by the discrepancy in the accounts perturb so what do we have disturb d i s t u r b and this next one is p e r t u r b perturb implies deep disturbance of mind and emotions as in, perturbed by her husband's strange behavior. What is he doing? What is going on with her husband? He's acting very strange today. Deep disturbance of mind and emotion. So, I don't know. I feel 
personally, I feel like disturb is more extreme than perturb. I feel like perturb is more like annoyed. Like, oh, I, you're perturbing me. Just quit, quit bugging me. That's what your strange behavior is just weird. Don't do it. But disturb, I would be disturbed by a certain kind of behavior. Disturbed to the bone. Agitate suggests obvious external signs of nervous or emotional excitement, as in, in his agitated state, we could see he was unable to work. Because he was all agitated and stuff. Uh, external signs of nervous or emotional excitement. That excitement doesn't necessarily mean, ooh, I'm excited. It's just everything is very excited. It's, it's agitated. Upset implies the disturbance of normal or habitual functioning by disappointment, distress, or grief. As in, the family's constant bickering upsets the youngest child. Yeah, I was, I was kind of like that. I didn't like it when people argued and yelled and talked a whole lot and blah, blah, blah. Uh, talked a whole lot. I, I guess I was just thinking of one side of my family. Just There was a lot of talking going on, and it wasn't upsetting necessarily, but it was a little irritating. But no, if, if people are constantly arguing, yes, that is very upsetting. Uh, you guess because your your normal habitual functioning is is being uh, disturbed, disquieted. Uh, the last synonym is fluster, and this one suggests bewildered agitation, as in his declaration of love completely flustered her. Bewildered agitation? She was agitated in a bewildered way? She was... Hmm. I don't know. That, that's an interesting one. His declaration of love completely flustered her. I guess, I guess, like, it doesn't necessarily mean a negative thing. I usually think of agitation as being negative. But here, I guess it's, you know, flustered her. It's like, oh, kind of takes you aback. Uh, whoa, whoa, what, what was that? I didn't, I wasn't prepared for that. I'm, I'm agitated and I'm bewildered by your declaration of love. All right, let's move on to nine. Disconcert. This is a transitive verb from 1687. One, to throw into confusion. Let's just throw that all into confusion. Everything has been disconcerted. Number two, to disturb the composure of. So this seems very similar to discompose. Uh, that one was to destroy the composure of. And this one for disconcert is to disturb. So the composure is being messed up in both uh, situations. But disconcert, I feel like, is less extreme than discompose. Because you're disturbing the composure, opposed to discompose where you have destroyed the composure. A synonym is the word embarrass, and uh, let's see, disconcerting is an adjective, disconcertingly is an adverb, disconcertment is a noun. Eight, I hope I don't lose count. The next word is disconfirm, transitive verb from 1936, to deny or refuse the validity of. Disconfirmation is a noun. Yeah, usually if you confirm a thing, you are saying that it is valid, it is correct, it is true. But if you disconfirm it, you've gotten rid of all of those things. It's not valid anymore. This, this podcast has been disconfirmed. It is not a valid podcast. Never was. Seven. Disconformity is next. Disconformity. Noun from 1587. Number one, the synonym is non-conformity. I like the non-conformity, the disconformity. I like it, but I also don't fully live it. I know a lot of people who have definitely lived the life of someone being non-conformist, disconformist, uh, much more than me. Um, I don't know. I feel like I need to do that a little bit more. But if it's not a natural thing, then why force it? I don't know. I feel like I, I want to do something a little bit different 
but nothing really feels like it fits with me. Number two for disconformity, a break in a sequence of sedimentary rocks, all of which have approximately the same dip. Oh, they have the same dip. That's wonderful for them. Uh, I feel like we need to re-look at dip. Oh, there's too many. Too many definitions for dip. Something with rocks, it looks like. Uh, Disconformity. Uh, They're not conforming to the same. Break in a sequence of sedimentary rocks, but they have the same dip. So, yeah. Uh, Six? Six, five, four, three, two. Sure. Six. Six. Disconnect. First form. uh, It's a verb from 1770, starting with transitive one. To sever the connection of or between. They were connected, and now they are disconnected. I think there should be a game called Disconnect Four. What would that game be like? That there's already four things, and you have to figure out how to disconnect them? I don't know. There's something in there. If you make that game, you can give me a percentage of the prop profits and the stuff number two for disconnect is the number one definition for dissociate as in are disconnected from meaningful relationships disconnected dissociated you're not connected to your meaningful relationships anymore maybe you never were i don't know what your relationships are like uh, but yeah, you know, if, depending on how things go, sometimes sometimes it's the best idea to dissociate or disconnect from certain relationships that are not maybe so good for you anymore. Here's intransitive one, to terminate a connection. Maybe you're on the phone with somebody and you don't want to talk to them anymore. You can disconnect the phone line by hanging up. Number two. To become detached or withdrawn, as in, disconnects into dark moods. I think we all do this, some of us more than others. Sometimes you just get into a dark mood and you just want to disconnect from the world. That's perfectly fine. I hope you come back. I'll see you later. Disconnection is a noun. Five golden rings. The second form of disconnect, noun from 1976, a lack of or a break in connection, consistency, or agreement, as in, a huge disconnect between the nation's capital and the rest of the country. And that is a quote from R.J. Samuelson. So, uh, let's see, a lack of the break in connection, consistency, or agreement, um... Oh, yes, there is definitely a disconnect between the politicians and the rest of the country, the majority of the country who are, you know, middle class or lower. And, uh, you know, a lot of the politicians, they don't really think about that stuff. At least some of them don't. And, uh, yeah, so this is the disconnect. This is the noun. So this is when there is a disconnect between things that is a disconnect, opposed to the previous word, which was the action of disconnecting the verb. And I know that that probably seems obvious to a lot of people, but I like to be a little extra specific uh, when talking about these different forms, because for some people, it might not be so easy. Uh, So, you know, also for my own brain, I like to remind myself, okay, this is the noun, this is the verb, this is the adjective version of these words. It helps my brain uh, contextualize everything. Four, disconnected adjective from... 1783, not connected, the synonym is separate. Also, the synonym, there's another one, it's just hanging out here, incoherent, as in a disconnected narrative. A lot of these episodes, these words are not connected in any way. Sometimes we jump from one topic to another topic to another topic to another topic, no connection whatsoever, and it's kind of fun to just jump around all like that. I I enjoy it. Disconnectedly is an adverb, and disconnectedness is a noun. Are we connected 
in any way? Can we connect? Are you enjoying this this show, this podcast, this thing, this whatever it is, all this talking to you? Uh, if you like it, uh, oh, I forgot to say at the beginning. Maybe I'll save that for the end. If, but if you're enjoying the show, go rate and review and share and subscribe to all the, do do all those things, please and thank you. Um, three disconsolate is next. Disconsolate, adjective from the 14th century. One, the synonym is cheerless. I have no cheer. I am disconsolate, as in a clutch of disconsolate houses. That is a quote from D. H. Lawrence. All of those houses have no cheer. They're not colorful. They're very bland. The architecture is uninteresting. There's no curb appeal. There's no happy faces in the windows. They're disconsolate. Number two, the synonyms are dejected and downcast, as in, the team returned disconsolate from three losses. Oh, that's a whole lot of losses. I'm very sorry for that team. Hopefully, they can turn it around and win some, win some games. Uh, this is not a word that I'm familiar with. Uh, disconsolately is an adverb. Disconsolateness is a noun. Disconsolation is a noun, and the etymology says this is basically from the word, uh, let's see, the, the Latin verb consolari, which means to console. So, hmm, if you're consoling somebody, you're making them feel better, but this is the opposite of that, so that's why it's cheerless and sad and dejected and downcast and depressed and all those fun things. Two, the next word is discontent first form. This is the last word. We'll also have the second form in this episode, but the third and fourth forms will be in the next episode. So, discontent. Um, Adjective from the 15th century. The synonym is just discontented, which will be in tomorrow's episode, which, I'm looking at it now, is only synonyms. So, discontent sends you to discontented, which just sends you to other words. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. One. One. The last word, the very last one for this episode, being recorded on New Year's Eve 2022, is the second form of discontent. Noun from 1534. Lack of contentment. I hope none of us are ever in this state of being discontent, have discontent, of course we will, we have, and we will, and that's just life. There's ups and downs. But the, the goal, if I think for most people, is to not have discontent, is to be content, at the very least, if not ecstatically happy. I, I bounce back and forth with these day-to-day, uh, probably like the rest of you. Okay, but there's more to the definition, because we have an A, a sub-definition A, a sense of grievance, the synonym is dissatisfaction. I can't get no dissatisfaction. That's not how the song goes, is it? Especially when you add a whole syllable like that. There's an example, the winter of our discontent, and that is from Shakespeare. Probably the most famous usage of this word, discontent. The winter of our discontent. What does that mean? I, I'm not so good studying Shakespeare. A sense of grievance. But what is the winter of our discontent? Is it the end of our discontent? Is it the beginning? Is it not even a sense of time? I don't know. But it is the winter of our discontent. B. Restless aspiration for improvement. Ah, okay. So if you are in a state of, of no contentment, uh... You, but you, you have you have a place to go. You have a way to go up, uh, and so you can ex- aspire to improve and get better. So it's kind of a good place to be. Sometimes it kind of is like, what's what's your lowest point? Are you discontent? You can only go up. Hopefully, maybe you can go down a little bit further, but in general, you can only go up. 
So, you know, being up is a great place to be. Being down is also a great place to be because it is a chance for you to, hmm, this is oddly appropriate for the day that I'm recording this. You know, the whole the idea of the new year, starting fresh, making changes, resolutions, all that. Uh, if you are maybe feeling down and, uh, you know, of course, you're listening to this in 2023 or later. So this isn't as appropriate for you. But, you know, you're probably still in January, potentially. And uh, so it's still early. You still got time to make some changes. You always, it doesn't have to be the beginning of the year. Today, tomorrow, what your birthday, whatever day that you want to make some changes, if you feel like you need to, just do it. It doesn't have to be the new year. Why wait until the new year to make some resolu- resolutions? Start now. It doesn't matter what time it is just do it aspire for improvement if you want i don't care you do you i just want you to be happy and content okay the words in this episode were discommend discommode discompose disconcert disconfirm disconformity disconnect disconnect disconnected disconsolate discontent and discontent. Hmm. Well, I I think discompose, maybe just because it had all those synonym things and uh, destroying the composure, disturb, disturbing the order of, you know, I think that there are, ooh, yeah, I do, I do like that, uh, discompose, that, we'll pick that as the word of the episode. Um, change is inevitable. I'm sure I've talked about this before, and I will ch- talk about it many more times. Change is always happening, whether you like it or not, and there's a sense of order in your life in the world, and you gotta change it up sometimes. If you don't, it's gonna happen anyway. Life is just gonna do that to you, so if you can make it happen, then it's in your own terms, and that's good. So I think we all could do some discomposing in our life. Discompose, discompose, discompose your life, discompose the order. Uh, these are not songs. Discompose, discompose, discompose everything around you, but not completely because that would be a little too much. But yes, let's just discompose certain things when it is appropriate to do. Okay, that was fine. There's some interesting words in there. Let's, uh, I, I will, uh, I will tell you, I recorded, uh, I recorded with a guest yesterday, so their episode is coming up in about a week or so, and, uh, we had a whole lot of fun, v- much, much silliness happened, um, and, uh, yeah, we had, we had a lot of fun talking about these words. Anyway, that's gonna be the end of this episode, thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Happy New Year, goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Thank you very much for joining me on this uh, very long uh, process journey thing called the dictionary. Uh, Let's see. Anything to say? I'm Spencer. I'm reading this book to you and you are loving it, right? Yep, that's what I thought. Uh, Okay, so the first word in this episode is the third form of discontent. Of course, if you did not hear me talk about the previous two forms, you got to go check out the previous episode. Discontent, D-I-S-C-O-N-T-E-N-T, transitive verb from 1549, and it is to make discontented, uh, which, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to see that soon. And I'm just looking back, the first form of discontent is the adjective which is the synonym discontented, and to make something discontented is also discontent. Discontentment is a noun. Ooh, that that mint was did, did not make me content. It was a discontentment. Okay, sound effect. The next word is the fourth form of discontent noun. So the second form was also a noun, but uh, so that one was just lack of contentment, like the state of 
having discontent, I guess, is the noun. But this one, noun from 1596, one who is discontented. They are a discontent. If you are not content in the things in your life, then you are discontent. You are a discontent. And maybe you could change some things so you will just be content. The synonym is malcontent. I guess that's another name for somebody who is discontented, which is the next word, discontented. Adjective from 1525, the synonyms are dissatisfied and malcontent. Yep, we've seen that a lot. Uh, And discontentedly is an adverb and discontentedness is a noun. So maybe when we get to dissatisfied, we will get much more information about what does it mean to be discontented? It's just basically like not happy. Just just unhappy with the situation, I guess. Oh, I'm very discontent with that definition. Next. The next word is discontinuance. Or just discontinuance. Continuance, continue. Ah, this is practically the same thing. Noun from the 14th century. One, the act or an instance of discontinuing. Two, the interruption or termination of a legal action by the plaintiffs not continuing it. Why did I miss those last? That last word. The plaintiff's not continuing it. Uh, They want um, discontinuance. So it's the interruption or it's the ending of a thing. They don't want to keep on going. Uh, So they want to stop. They stop it from going. Discontinuance. Um, And yep, just if a thing is not, it does not go on. Let's see. uh, We're going to get more information about discontinuing in the next word. But when it is not happening... It is a discontinuance. Discontinue is the next word. Verb from the 14th century starting with transitive. One, to break the continuity of. Also, cease to operate, administer, use, produce, or take. Uh, let's see. I mean, the first thing I can think of is maybe some medication. If you are discontinuing the medication, you are not, you are breaking the continuity of taking it, ceasing to use it or take it. Two, to abandon or terminate by a legal discontinuance. That's the one from the previous word. Intransitive verb is to come to an end. Oh, it it has had come to an end. There is no more. A synonym is the word stop. My least favorite example of something when it is uh, when it comes to an end, they have discontinued, is when I go to the grocery store and they don't have the thing that I've been buying for months and months and months, and it has been discontinued. And I get very sad and I say, why? Why did you take this away from me? I loved it so much. Will it ever come back? We don't know. The computer tells me everything I need to know, which is right now that it's been discontinued. Oh, that's that's the worst. Sometimes it's a packaging change. Sometimes it's a formulation change. But every once in a while, they have just completely discontinued a product. I guess I didn't buy enough of it. Discontinuation. That is a noun. Yeah, it's just from dis plus the Latin continuare, which means to continue. So it's no more continuing. But we are going to keep on continuing with this episode by doing this sound. Discontinuity. Discontinuity. Noun from 1570. One, lack of continuity or cohesion. Oh, everything's all in different places, and there's no cohesion to anything. We are in a state of discontinuity. Number five, the synonym, well, it's the number five definition for the word gap. So if there's a thing that's going along, and then it stops, there's a gap, and then it starts up again, uh, that is a discontinuity. 3A, 
the property of being not mathematically continuous, as in a point of discontinuity. Discontinuity. 3b, an instance of being not mathematically continuous, especially a value of an independent variable at which a function is not continuous. What sort of function is this? Is this like when you graph a thing on the x and the y coordinates and it does it stop? And then I don't I don't fully understand the context of this math one, 3a and 3b. All I know is when a thing stops and then it starts up again or something like that. Maybe in film, you know, there's somebody who's checking the continuity of from this shot to this shot. Is the drink at the same level? Is the cigarette in the same thing? Are they are their arms in the same position? Uh, so I guess uh, if those are not the case in a film, they would be discontinu no discontinuous discontinuous adjective from 1718 one a one not continuous as in a discontinuous series of events uh lemony snickets discontinuous series of unfortunate events one a two not continued the synonym is discrete as in discontinuous features of terrain so they are they're not continued they they go on for a while but then they stop and that's it so the the features of the terrain don't go on forever not continued and not continuous those were the definitions for 1a1 and 1a2 uh so 1a1 is not continuous that's a series of events is the example and 1A1 or 1A2 is not continued. And the example is the, the, the discontinuous features of terrain. What is the difference between not continuous and not continued? Maybe is it the context of the thing that is not going on? I'm not sure. Wow. Why, why do you use one word or the other? 1B, lacking sequence or coherence. Well, this podcast does not lack in sequence, but it does lack in coherence sometimes. Number two, having one or more mathematical discontinuity. Wait, discontinuities. I think that's how you'd say that one. Yes, discontinuities. Uh, this is uh, used uh, of a variable or a function, that number two one, because it's math. Discontinuously is an adverb. Depending on the word, you emphasize different syllables, and it kind of hurts. How do you, where where does the where does the emphasis go? Discontinue, discontinuity, discontinuous. All right, we said all of those words, all of the discontinuing words, also the discontented words, and we're moving on to one more word. No, no, we have one more before that. Discophile. Noun from 1940, D-I-S-C-O-P-H-I-L-E. And this is, well, we can say that in a second. This is one who studies and collects phonograph records or CDs. Phonograph records or CDs. This is using the disco prefix. Um, it was it was dis, disc, disi, or disco. Uh, which means basically just disc. So yes, phonograph records are in the shape of a disc. CDs are in the shape of a disc. Uh, I think most discophiles are probably collecting the vinyl, the uh, the LPs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, technically CDs too. But the, there are other things that are disc-shaped. There's DVDs and Blu-rays. And uh, there's the thing that doesn't exist anymore, the HD DVDs, I think that's what, the, there's laser discs, there's video game discs, uh, there was, uh, there's other things that I can't think of, maybe I said them all, did I say them all? The close enough. If you really, really love discs of any kind, you're a discophile. Alright, here is one more word for this episode, we got two forms, 
beep, 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 beep. Discord, D-I-S-C-O-R-D. First form, noun from the 13th century. 1A, lack of agreement or harmony as between persons, things, or ideas. So if the people of things or the ideas are not in harmony, they don't agree with each other, they're in a state of discord. Can we, Let's have a, a productive conversation so we can get to a, a chord and not discord. 1B, active quarreling or conflict resulting from discord among persons or factions. And the synonym is strife. Two groups of people not agreeing with each other actively in conflict or quarreling. Maybe they're fighting. Uh, was, uh, what, uh, what was that movie that we just saw last year? Um, oh, I'm blanking on the name. Anyway, Belfast. Belfast. They were definitely in a state of discord during that time. The religious groups were not liking each other. And I think there's still some issues, but not as bad as it used to be. That was a major state of discord. 2A1, a combination of musical sounds that strikes the ear harshly. These are things that are not in harmony. Uh, That was in the number 1A definition, not in harmony. They don't sound good to the average ear. So, of course, I'm going to have to put in a sound of some sort of combination of musical sounds that are in discord with each other. Ooh, that hurt, right? 2A2, this synonym is dissonance, which is also, uh, yes, often we use the word dissonance if sounds don't sound right together. Like if you played like a, a C and a C sharp on the piano, They're so close together. They're not really in harmony. It sounds a little weird to our ears. Um, There's a lot of examples like that. Um, But, you know, there's other cultures in the world that uh, it might sound sound good to. You know, like I know in, I think, Indian music, they have a lot of, like, subtones. Um, That's not the the correct term. Um, In in the Western uh, scale, there's 12 notes, but I think in other cultures like India, they have maybe 24 notes. And so the, the difference between one note to the next note is a lot smaller. Uh, and so it, um, you know, they're just used to hearing those sounds and, you know, I'm not, but some people are. To be a harsh or unpleasant sound. Like, the nails on the chalkboard is the the first one that we can think of, and it's one of the worst sounds, I think, in the world. Some people really hate, like, knife and fork on a plate, those sounds. Some people hate clipping of nails. I'm not going to put any of these sounds in there because I don't want to hurt myself or you, but you can imagine what those sound, and it's probably sending shivers up your spine right now. Okay, there is synonym information. Discord, strife, conflict, contention, dissension, and variance mean a state or condition marked by a lack of agreement or harmony. That's what this is all about. Things not seeing eye to eye. There's no harmony. It sounds like... uh, 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 It sounds bad. Discord implies an intrinsic or essential lack of harmony producing quarreling, factiousness, or antagonism, as in a political party long racked by discord. Uh, So are they, if the political party is racked by discord, are they arguing with each other or every other political party? Strife emphasizes a struggle for superiority rather than than the incongruity or incompatibility of the persons or things involved. As in, during his brief reign, the empire was never free of civil strife. Conflict usually stresses the action of forces in opposition, but in static applications implies an irreconcilability as of duties or desires, as in the conflict 
of freedom and responsibility. Hmm. Contention applies to strife or competition that shows itself in quarreling, disputing, or controversy, or as some people like to say, controversy, as in several points of contention about the new zoning law. We got some issues. We have to have a, a little quarrel about the new zoning law before we can continue. Dissension implies strife or discord and stresses a division into factions, as in religious dissension threatened to split the colony. Oh, lots of strife and discord there. Variance implies a clash between persons or things owing to a difference in nature, opinion, or interest, as in cultural variances that work against a national identity. So much information. If you were confused, no, if you are confused about the differences of these words um, or other sort of synonym sections, this is very helpful to go see the sort of subtle differences and then also get the examples. That helps too. Okay, one more word for this episode. It's the second form of discord. You can emphasize either syllable, discord or discord. Intransitive verb from the 14th century, the synonyms are disagree and clash. It's from the Latin discordare, which is from discord or discourse, which means discordant. Oh, and uh, this is this is interesting. I don't remember. Maybe we saw this in accord or accord or something. It's from dis plus cord or core, which means heart. And there's more at the word heart. So what does that mean? If you are disagreeing or clashing, there's an argument, a quarrel, um, then your your hearts, if you're having a quarrel with somebody else, your hearts disagree. You are pleading with them with your heart. I don't know. There's something about heart in there. Um. And I have to mention that there is an app, a very popular app thing that you can have on your computer, your phone, your tablet, whatever, and it's called Discord. Uh, they are not paying me, obviously, but um, it's uh, it gets used for a lot of things. Uh, I think a lot of gamers, that's where it started. Gamers were using it to talk with each other while they were playing, playing the gaming, uh, but people can use it for text. I use it for work when we're uh, for so people in different locations can talk to each other, um, but it's used a lot more now. You know, there's a lot of like podcasts and groups of things that are making Discord servers so they can uh, talk about things and they can create little sub sub channel chatty things. And uh, it, it seems like it's a really great way for people to communicate in various ways: text, pictures, video, talking, all those things. But what I think is interesting is the name. Discord, in all of these definitions, means two things not not agreeing. Their hearts are not agreeing with each other. Uh, it's It seems like kind of a negative word, and so I'm really curious to know, and maybe I'll do a little bit of digging. Um, I'm really curious to know what does the name mean to the people who made this thing? Does it mean something else? Is it a play on words that I can't think of at the moment? I mean, there's, oh, you know what? It probably is just as simple as there's no chord between the people. It's, 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 it's remote. It's, it's wireless. Um, that's the dis. The dis is getting rid of the chord, maybe, but also, if you know what this word means, all the stuff that I just read for the last 10 minutes, uh, it's it's more negative than that. It's quarreling. I mean, also, maybe people who are gaming, they're arguing with each other about what to do or what they just did or things like that. So I guess that kind of makes sense. But I don't know. It seems like it's a little bit of a weird, a weird name. But it also works and people know it. And so it's not like they're going to change. All right, let's reread the words. We had discontent, discontent, discontented, discontinuance, discontinue, discontinuity, discontinuance, discophile, discord, and discord. 
Let's pick discophile as the word of the episode. And of course, it makes me want to go to a disco, look at a disco ball, d- dance around. I don't know. Discophile. Uh, I don't know how to sing a song about discophile. I've got some records and I've got some CDs. I guess I'm a little bit of a discophile. We started collecting records even before we had a usable record player. We don't listen to records very often, but every now and then. Disc, I'm not a discophile. I have a very, very small collection. It's not a thing that I focus a lot of time on, but there are people who take it very seriously, and they know all the stuff and all the things. Uh, Dr. Demento, actually, uh, who who has had a huge effect on so many people in the world, uh, he is a huge discophile. He has thousands and thousands, like, I want to say hundreds of thousands of mostly records, but also, you know, I'm CDs, and I'm sure... And uh, they go back a long time, and it's all sorts of music, and he he can't even store it all in one place, I don't think. He has so, so many discs of all kinds. Uh, okay. Yep, that was fine. That was just fine. Let's end this episode now, and uh, I'll, see you, I'll see you in the next one, whenever that happens to me, which will air tomorrow. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Wow, the emphasis on those words was so weird. I apologize. This is called The Dictionary. Uh, this is another episode. It's brand new. Nothing. It's, 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 it's the first time that this one has ever been done before. And it also will be the last time this one is ever done. I hope I don't have to re-record it for any reason. Okay, good. We are recording. Hello, I'm Spencer. The first word in this episode is discordance. D-I-S-C-O-R-D-A-N-C-E. This is when your heart is not agreeing with somebody else's heart and they do a dance, an interpretive dance about how they disagree. Discordance, noun from the 14th century. One, the state or an instance of being discordant. Number two, the synonym is dissonance. And yes, of course, this is similar to uh, what we had at the in the last half of the last episode with the word discord. But we have more, more of these discord words. And uh, let's see, the sound effect is going to be the next word is discordancy so we took the word discordance and replaced the e with a y discordancy noun from 1607 the synonym it's just the word discordance it's the same thing they're both nouns but one of them is from about 200 years later so I guess, do we use discordancy more than discordance? Do we use either one of them ever? Sometimes, yes. All right, next word. Discordant. So discordance is the state or an instance of being discordant. Discordant, adjective from the 14th century. 1A, being at variance. The synonym is disagreeing, as in discordant opinions. One person has an opinion about a thing, and the other person has an opinion about a thing, and they are opposite. They're different. They, uh, they're at variance with each other. They disagree with each other, so they are discordant. 1B, the synonym is quarrelsome. So I'm sure it's probably a little confusing to figure out when to use all of these words because discordance and discordancy and discord are all nouns. So you got to figure out when to use them. I can't tell you. You got to learn that for yourself. And then discord can also be a verb and discordant is an adjective. Uh, I didn't finish 1B. The synonym is quarrelsome. The, The example is a discordant family. So the family 
is discordant because they like to quarrel and bicker and fight and argue and disagree all the time. And they have discords and uh, they are also in discordance with each other and they do discording. Number two, relating to a discord, as in a discordant tone. That's the music, the, the sound that doesn't sound like it sounds good together. <laughs> the sound that doesn't sound like it sounds good together? That doesn't make any sense. Unpleasant sound, harsh, hits the ear harshly, not in harmony. Discordantly is an adverb. And I can't get out of my head playing around. What's his James Corden? Uh, there's James Discordant. James Discordin, James Discordance, yeah, something like that. Okay, the next word, discotech, D-I-S-C-O-T-H-E-Q-U-E. You can also spell it, let's see, it's the same spelling, but the E before the Q, so T-H-E, that E, has the accent that is up on the left and down on the right, and it goes, pew! And uh, I don't remember what that is called. Let's just do a quick back, a quick check to the diacritics. Oh, I had I had the page, and then all the pages fell onto the page that I was on. Uh, let's see, it is the grave accent. The grave, I will try, try to remember these things. It's going to take a long time. Discotech. Dis, you can emphasize the first syllable or the last syllable. Discotech or discotech. Noun from 1954. And it's just the number one definition for the word disco, which, uh, let's see, we have a couple forms. Uh, popular, oh, you know what? I haven't even read that. I haven't done that episode yet. I'm hoping to possibly get an, uh, a guest on that one, uh, not because of the word disco, although that might be fun. But, uh, but yeah, it's uh, the nightclub or to dance to disco music. But discotheque is a noun. So it is the place where the dancing is happening to the nightclub music that might sound something like... The next word is discount. First form, noun from 1622... Number one, let's see, we have a number one, and then we have uh, some sub-definitions for it. Number one is a reduction made from the gross amount or value of something. So the total amount made is the gross that's made or the value of a thing, but then if you cut that down, that amount That reduction is the discount. Maybe it's a 10% discount. So 10% from the gross, that is the discount. As 1A1, a reduction made from a regular or list price. The regular price, the list price, it's $50,000. But no, 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 that you can't pay that much. Let's let's, uh, add a discount to it. Let's take off 1%. Oh, now I have to do math. 1% is $50,000. Five no five hundred dollars from fifty thousand dollars five hundred dollars is the discount and so now it costs forty nine thousand five hundred dollars. One a two is a proportionate deduction from a debt account usually made for cash or prompt payment. A proportionate deduction from a debt account. So this is where you owe money usually made for cash or prompt. I don't totally understand what this one is, but it's basically the same idea. It's the reduction of the total amount. Maybe this is a discount to the debt that you owe because if you maybe if you pay cash, you get a discount. You get a discount. Maybe 1B. A deduction made for uh, what is it? a deduction made for interest in advancing money upon or purchasing a bill or note not due. Oh my God, these definitions, simple yet complicated. It's a deduction. It's a lessening of a thing. Number two, the act or practice of discounting is the discount. 
Three, a deduction taken or allowance made. Deduction taken or allowance made. There is no etymology for this one, but we will have some in the second one, but I'm pretty sure it's fairly clear to most humans. But we will talk about it here in the next word. The second form of discount. Verb from 1629, starting with transitive. All but one of these are transitive. 1A, to make a deduction from, usually for cash or prompt payment. And yes, I will stress to myself and to you, this is the verb. So this is the act of discounting. As in, a discounted price. The price went through a discount. It said, I'm too expensive. Lower me, please. So the people can buy me. 1B. To sell or offer for sale at a discount. As in, discounting last year's model. Oh, this is such a good thing to do. When they release a new version and you want it, but you're like, I just can't afford the new one, but I don't have the previous one and I still want it and that's worth it to me to get it at a discount. Oh, that's just, it feels so good. I'm waiting until the the 4K UHD TVs are on discount. Someday I'll get one of those pretty, pretty babies. Okay, number two for the verb discount. To lend money on after deducting the discount. To lend money on after deducting the discount. So are you lending what the, the difference is, what the discount is? Or ah, you're lending money after the discount has been taken into effect. 3A, to leave out of account. The synonym is disregard. Just going to leave it out. I don't care. Disregard it. No, we don't. We don't want it. It's We're discounting that, that thing. It's not important. I don't think this one really has to do with money. It's like a, a person can be discounted. A thing can be discounted. Whatever. Whatever it is. 3B, to minimize the importance of, as in, shouldn't discount his contributions. Yes, this is very similar to 3A, which is why they are both under the number 3. Uh, so, yes, don't don't discount his contributions. He did some very good contributions. He should be respected for his contributions. Don't discount him yet. Don't discount my contributions to the podcast world. 3C1 is next. To make allowance for bias or exaggeration in. Is that the end of the sentence? To make allowance for bias or exaggeration in. So what sort of allowance is this? You are, you understand that maybe there's some bias or exaggeration in a thing and you're... I don't know. It's still related to the other the other two definitions for three. To leave out of account, to minimize the importance of. This one's similar because it's C, but it is C1. So here we have 3C2. To view with doubt, as in discount a rumor. Yeah, that rumor, I it's it doesn't have any importance. Uh I'm I'm gonna leave it out of account because it's a rumor. And I don't think it's I don't think it's true. Three D to take into account in present calculations. And the example of uh, I guess where you're taking this account is a future event. To take into account as a future event in present calculations. Ah, so the future event is what you are taking into account. Okay, so let's look ahead. What is what's gonna happen in the future? Ah. We're, we're not going to discount that. Uh, was that the right thing to say? Uh, what's this future event? Let's calculate that possibility or, or likelihood or definite thing that's going to happen right now. But how that's discount exactly, I'm not sure. that I'm trying to wrap my brain around the context of that one. All right, here is intransitive 
to give or make discounts. That's it for that. Discounter is a noun. Okay, this is from the Latin dis plus computare, which means to count. Uh, there's more of the word count. So, you know, this is probably like count as in like, what's the count of a thing? How much is there? Money, probably, and yeah. So that's why it's it's the opposite of that. You've got a count, you count up to a thing, but you're discounting, so you're lowering that number. I think that's just fine. The next word. I don't really know if that's much of a disco drum beat, but it's becoming more of just a scatty thing. Okay, third form of discount, adjective. We got to the adjective form. From 1863, 1A, selling goods or services at a discount, as in discount stores. Also as in a discount broker. Also as in, again, discount airlines. These are all types of things that sell goods at a cheaper price than the other places because why? Because how do they do this? Do they get things wholesale? Do they just not want to make as much money? Do they think that if they sell at lower prices, they're going to get more sales? And so they're hoping to go to make more money off of uh, quantity? Uh, The problem is you might be lacking in quality, They might sell more quantity, but the quality might not be so great. As in, my own example, uh, airlines that uh, have very cheap prices but charge you for lots and lots of things, like to reserve a seat or to bring a bag on or a second bag or a third bag. They charge you for every tiny little thing. And uh, yeah, those are definitely discount airlines. They can be useful in certain cases. If you don't care where you sit, if you're not bringing a bag, then you can get a pretty good price. We actually got hit by one of these accidentally. It was a foreign airlines. We were in another country and we did not realize that we had booked with a discount airlines. And so when we went to check in, we had we had carry-ons and we had checked baggages because it was a whole month-long trip. And they were like, oh, you're going to have to pay all these hundreds of dollars for all of your bags. And we said, uh, no, thank you. We ended up, we had to pay for the tickets, but we ended up buying brand new tickets on a whole other airline's for like the same price i think as the other ones or something or maybe the price that it would have been i don't know it was like we saved money in the long run uh we did have to buy new tickets which sucked uh luckily we were able to do that financially but we did really didn't want to but we also didn't want to pay more money for the bags yeah watch out just watch out for those discount airlines 1b Offered or sold at a discount, as in discount tickets. Same thing, you might want to be wary of something like that. But there are places that will sell discount tickets or things like that, so do your research. Number two, reflecting a discount, as in discount prices. Discount Airlines selling discount tickets at discount prices. Hooey, come on down and get your discount prices at our discount airlines. Okay, okay, that's enough of that. Let's move on to... Discountable. Discountable, you can emphasize the second syllable or you can emphasize the first syllable, which sounds like discountable. Adjective from 1800. One, set apart for discounting, as in, within the discountable period. Set apart for discounting. I'm trying to figure this this one out. Within the discountable period. So is there a period of time when a thing, maybe maybe uh, plane tickets or something, they have, uh, but I, I don't I don't know. Number two. Subject to being discounted, as in a discounted, no, a discountable note. Uh, I don't know what this note is. How can a note be discounted? Maybe it's more of the uh, uh, minimize the importance of 
don't discount that note. It's a very important note. It has really important things to say. That note does. Yes, it does. I'm a note. Better read me. Uh, yeah. Set up. Anyway, let's let's move on. I, I don't want to think too hard on some of these. The next word is discountenance. Discountenance or discountenance. First form, transitive verb from 1580. One, the synonyms are abash and disconcert. Disconcert. Number two, to look with disfavor on. Also, discourage by evidence of disapproval, as in discountenanced. That's it's the word with an ed. Discountenanced all bellicose statements. So you're looking at these bellicose statements with disfavor. Uh, discourage by evidence of disapproval. This seems like this is definitely in the legal world, which is my why my brain can't completely understand it. But um. Yeah, it's uh, it's something that's uh, discounted. Yeah, sure. Sure, why not? The next word. The next word is the second form of discountenance. This one is a noun, also from 1580. The synonyms are disapprobation. Disapprobation and also disfavor. And that's all it says. There's no examples. So it is a discountenance. Whatever it is, it has been probably discounted in some way. Discountenance. Next word. Uh, We're just doing fun drum fills. Let's get back to disco if we can. There's There's a lot of symbols. Whatever. The next word is discount rate. Two words. Noun from circa 1927. Number one. The interest on an annual basis deducted in advance on a loan. I think we had something similar to this related to money here. Uh, The first form of discount 1A2 is a proportionate deduction from a debt account usually made for cash or prompt payment. I assume that that's similar to this one, which is discount rate, the interest on an annual basis deducted in advance on a loan. So if you have borrowed money every year, you get a a discount rate. It is the interest that you have to pay back, Um, but maybe it's changing every year. I don't know. Number two, the charge levied by a central bank for advances and re-discounts. Ooh, we just got it more complicated. Re-discounts. That's multiple discounts. Discounts on discounts. The next word. I don't know. Maybe the, the next one will be a little better. This next word is discourage. It is a verb, I believe it is just transitive, from the 15th century. One, to deprive of courage or confidence. The synonym is dishearten, as in, was discouraged by repeated failure. Oh, I would be discouraged too, over and over again. I mean, I am sometimes a little discouraged about this podcast because, you know, it's just... Is it what, what? What is it? I don't know. It's educational and slightly entertaining. That's what it is. I am not going to get discouraged. Uh, nobody has said any bad things though, so that's good. Well, not really. There's a couple. Um, yes, I still have courage and confidence in what I'm doing. Two a, to hinder by disfavoring, as in trying. To discourage absenteeism. Uh, so we don't we don't want absenteeism. 
uh, let's make disfavoring. We're making it sound bad. Okay, I think that's I think that's what uh, this example is. Uh, there's lots of things. Uh, I just heard myself talk about uh, smoking cigarettes. Let's discourage the smoking of the cigarettes. I think that's a very very good thing to discourage. To be, to dissuade or attempt to dissuade from doing something, like smoking cigarettes, as in, tried to discourage her from going. You didn't want her to go. We don't know where, It's but you just in general, just don't go anywhere. Please stay and sit and not do anything fun. No going out for anybody. Discourageable is an adjective. Discourager, that is a noun. That's, uh, I guess, the one who is doing the discouraging. And discouragingly is an adverb. Um, yeah, I mean, it's literally just dis plus courage. Um, so if, you, uh, if somebody has courage or confidence in a thing and then you tell them no, you, you try to convince them to not have the courage or the confidence, then you are, you are being discouraging. Hmm. The last word. The last word is discouragement. D-I-S-C-O-U-R-A-G-E-M-E-N-T. Noun from 1561. Number one. The act of discouraging. Also, the state of being discouraged. Two, something that discourages. Guess you could also call that a discourager. Something that something that discourages. Oh, English words, all the words, they sound so weird. Discourage. What even is that discourage? It's just sounds that you make with your mouth. Okay, those were all the words. We had such a good time. Uh, let's reread them. We had discordance, discordancy, discordant, discotheque, discount, 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 discountable, discountenance, discountenance, discount rate, discourage, and discouragement. Ooh, well, I might go the path like I did yesterday in the previous episode and maybe pick discotheque as the word of the episode just because it's it's just different than these other ones. But also, I mean, I don't know. I do like a good discount. Who doesn't like a good discount when you're buying something? Um, maybe the discotheque has a discounted cover charge. I don't know. Let's pick discotheque. I don't. I can't sing disco. Um... But, yeah, I don't know what that sounds like. Let's go to the disco. I want to do some dancing at the disco. Do, do, da, do, do, da. Do, do, da, do, do, do. Disco, disco. Let's dance at the disco. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Maybe I will uh, layer that up and see what it sounds like. Let's go to the disco. I want to do some dancing at the disco. Disco, disco. Let's dance at the disco. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, that is going to be the end of the episode. Um, I uh, Just because I like to, I'm going to mention some more movies that I have watched. And I don't know, as I say every single time, I don't know where I left off. We basically watched a bunch of Christmas movies uh let's see on christmas day we watched three movies i mostly watched uh one of them we we watched elf that's a good classic then i watched black adam while sharon took a nap because we didn't have anything to do uh bad mom's christmas super silly raunchy fun movie glass onion the new knives out movie Ooh, it's it's very good i enjoyed it uh, let's see, an old movie from the 70s, Dracula vs. Frankenstein, not a Christmas movie. Uh, very uh, cheap and silly and fun, and uh, a little a little sneak peek. One of the actors, uh, specifically the one who plays Dracula, has a small role in the uh, feature-length animated movie that I'm helping to produce. 
Um, and so, yeah, just 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 think about that one. Uh, let's see what else. White Noise. That is a fun, weird, interesting movie. A new movie. Noah Baumbach. A not a typical Noah Baumbach movie. Uh, let's see. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. That was very fun. I love the animation. The stop motion animation is friggin' beautiful. Uh, wasn't quite as dark as I was expecting from Guillermo del Toro, uh, but I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm I'm finishing up the movies that I watched in 2022. I'm obviously very behind in telling you what's going on in my life. Uh, Triangle of Sadness was the last one. I don't think there were any more after that. Um, yeah, Triangle of Sadness. Ooh, very uh, interesting. Uh, they're just, I don't know. It's worth a watch. There's a lot going on. There's like three very distinct sections and uh, kind of like in White Noise has the same kind of thing. Um, yeah, didn't know anything about it going into it, but uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting movie. Okay, clearly I like movies. I apologize if you don't like that. Anything else? Any stuff stuff to say? I don't know. I'm in 2023 now. It's it's, uh, it's a good good times. Let's uh, keep it going. Anyway, we're gonna end this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Hopefully, thank you. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Hello, hello. How are you doing? I am Spencer. I am reading the dictionary to you in short little sections. Episodes are about a half hour. I'm just saying these things in case you're new. There's not a lot of new people. Although today, just today, uh, I looked at the downloads and uh, somebody had downloaded. There were over 300 downloads. So somebody became a new fan and I am very grateful for you. Uh, What day? If you downloaded this show a whole lot on January 3rd, 2023 thanks thanks to you and all the other regular listeners okay the first word in this episode is discourse or discourse d-i-s-c-o-u-r-s-e first form noun from the 14th century number one is archaic It is the capacity of orderly thought or procedure. And the synonym is rationality. So the capacity of orderly thought. So if you have the ability to think orderly and have rationality to be rational, uh, then back in the archaic times, that was called discourse. Number two, verbal interchange of ideas especially the synonym conversation. If this episode had a guest, we would be having a discourse about the words in this episode, but it's not. I will try to have a discourse by myself. Oh, but just with you? Just you and you alone? Yes, just me, me alone, by myself. Number 3A. Formal and orderly and usually extended expression of thought on a subject. So uh, this is uh, not so much a conversation with uh, one or more people. Um, This looks like this is more about you talking about something, uh, but it's formal and you're very orderly about it. It's formal, orderly, organized, and probably extended. So you're talking about a subject at length, properly, and well-organized. 3b connected speech or writing that is also discourse so connect i don't know what that means connected speech or writing it's connected in what way to what to with to what what is connected 3c a linguistic unit larger than a sentence okay that's uh, keeping our standards pretty low here just lar- larger than a sentence It's a linguistic unit called a discourse. The examples are a conversation or a story, but it has to be longer than a sentence. Why can't you tell a story in one sentence? Sorry, it's not a discourse. Number four is obsolete. Social familiarity. 
social familiar. So if you're familiar with somebody socially, that would be called a discourse. Hmm. I wonder, wonder why we don't use this anymore. Number five, a mode of organizing knowledge, ideas, or experience that is rooted in language and its concrete contexts. The examples of those concrete contexts are history or institutions. As in the example, critical discourse. So, what is this mode of organizing knowledge, ideas, or experience that is rooted in language and its history or institutions? Yeah, I mean, this is, I think, similar to, uh, what, the 3A definition, which was formal and orderly extended expression of thought on a subject. But there's clearly something more specific and different about number five. It's the mode of organizing knowledge. So is this the process of figure... I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I was never um, part of the smart people crowd, so I don't know. Okay, let's see. This is from the lower Latin discursus, uh, which means argument or conversation or act of running about. Uh, that is from discurere, which is to run about, which is from dis plus curere, which means to run, and there's more at the word car. So I guess if something's running, if you're having a conversation, just lots of running around topics and things, uh, that's why it's called a discourse. Okay, we have another word, which means we need to do a sound effect, which is going to be Whoa! This second form of discourse is a verb from 1559, starting with intransitive. One, to express oneself, especially in oral discourse. Here I am, expressing myself orally. I have lots of things to say, which is why I am recording myself reading the dictionary and then talking about it. This is my oral discourse. Number two. Uh, I guess that would be this. I am discoursing. Number two. The synonyms are talk and converse. So if you're talking to somebody, you're having a conversation, you're conversing, you're talking, you're discoursing. That's what you should say the next time you're having a conversation. We're discoursing. Here is transitive, which is actually archaic, and it means to give forth. The synonym is utter, like uttering things from your mouth. It is going forth from your mouth across the room to another person. Discourser is a noun. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Whoa! Discourse analysis. Two words, noun from 1952. The study of linguistic relations and structures in discourse. Uh, okay, so we are just going to backtrack to the first form of discourse. I'm guessing this is related to either number 3A or 5. I'm not going to reread those again, but it's... So discourse analysis, this is where you're analyzing the structures in discourse. So maybe you're studying about what people say when they talk to each other or maybe uh, when somebody has, uh, they're, they're doing this extended expression of thought on a subject, you're analyzing that, you're studying the linguistic relations and structures. Oh, I find this fascinating, but my brain can't handle it. The relations and the structures of linguistical things. Next. Whoa! Discourteous is next. Adjective from 1578. I'll spell this one, why not? D-I-S-C-O-U-R-T-E-O-U-S. Lacking courtesy, this synonym is rude. Discourteously is an adverb, and discourteousness is a noun. If you were to write a review for this podcast, I would appreciate it if you were courteous and not discourteous, there's no need to be rude and discourteous. If you don't like it, 
just just be nice about how much you hate this. <laughs> Don't you go lacking any courtesy. I am I'm a big fan of being nice whenever you can most of the time you don't need to be rude how rude the next word whoa discourtesy noun from 1555 number one the synonym is rudeness and number two is a rude act you have so much discourtesy when you are doing the discourtesy. Don't be discourteous. What? The next word is discover. How well, I said that weird. Discover. 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 This is a verb from the 14th century starting with transitive. 1A. To make known or visible. And the synonym is expose. We didn't see it before, but now it's visible to everybody. We have uncovered it, discovered it. Number 1B is archaic. The synonym is display. You're putting it on display for people to see. 2A. To obtain sight or knowledge of for the first time. And the synonym is find as in, discover the solution. I have discovered many things while making this podcast. Uh, I've learned new words and etymologies to words that I either didn't know before. Uh, I learned etymology of words that I didn't know or words that I knew, but I didn't know the etymology. Some of them were very fascinating. You discover a lot when you read the dictionary or listen to me read the dictionary, most importantly. To be... The synonym is find out, as in, discovered he was out of gas. Oh, he probably found that out way too late. You don't want to discover that you have run out of gas. You want to discover that you're low on gas before you run out. I don't think I've ever run out of gas. Thank golly gee. Oh, that's not a situation I want to be in. I have gotten close. Intransitive verb is to make a discovery. Discoverable is an adjective, and discoverer is a noun. I would love to discover something. Let's see, this is from the Latin verb discooperere, which is from dis plus cooperere, which means to cover. Yeah, and there's more of the word cover, so it is... Doing the opposite of covering a thing up. Oh, what is this thing? It has been covered up. I will lift up the lid. And oh, look what's inside. It's this nice thing that I have just discovered. Okay, here we have some synonym information. Discover, ascertain, determine, unearth, and learn mean to find out what one did not previously know. Wait, that's not a sentence. They mean to find out what one did not, oh, what one did not previously know. You didn't know it before, now you know it. Discover may apply to something requiring exploration or investigation or to a chance encounter, as in, discovered the source of the river. You didn't know where it was and you had to go looking for it. You, you are a discoverer. Ascertain implies effort to find the facts or the truth proceeding from awareness of ignorance or uncertainty. That went on longer than I was expecting. There is an example. Attempts to ascertain the population of the region. So it takes effort to find out this information, the truth, the facts, um, because before you didn't have that information. You were ignorant determine emphasizes the intent to establish the facts definitely or precisely as in unable to determine the origin of the word sometimes well, there's lots of words that we don't know the origin of them now uh, the first one i can think of is the word dildo because i just not too long ago recorded that episode 
Uh, we don't know the origin of that word, supposedly. So, uh, yeah, unable to determine that the the thing. Uh, and what is the, what does it say? It emphasizes the intent to establish the facts. Definitely, you want you want the facts, the definite facts. Unearth implies bringing to light something forgotten or hidden, as in unearth old records. These might be vinyl records, but more than likely they are the written records, the things that people wrote down. Or It's like, what, what was going on back in these old days? Um, this one definitely feels similar to Discover, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a little, it's like, we and they're and they're not net literally coming from the earth, um, but it's kind of like they have sometimes they come from the earth and you have to put pick up the dirt that was on them and move it over and unearth these old things. Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit different from discover because a discover you're like okay where's this thing I'm trying to find this thing. But unearth might be something you don't even know what you're looking for. And you're like, oh, look at this thing that I just unearthed. Learn may imply acquiring knowledge with little effort or conscious intention. Or it may imply study and practice. The examples of, let's see, with little effort or conscious intention as by simply being told. That's the example of why it is little effort or conscious intention. You could just be told of a thing and then learn it. Like I am telling you words and definitions and etymologies and you are learning it. Or you might have to study and practice because we have examples. I learned her name only today. So she told you her name. That took very little effort for you to learn that. Unless you're like me, and then you immediately forgot her name, and you have to make a whole lot of effort to actually try and remember. That's there, there, there's the thing. You can learn a thing, but will you remember it? You have you actually learned it if you haven't remembered it? I don't know. There's another example. This one's more about the study and practice, and this is learning Greek. I guess I'm very slightly learning Greek when I read a lot of the etymology. But I would not say that I know Greek at all. I don't even know how to pronounce it, let alone know what these words mean. Okay, that was everything for Discover. I like the idea of discovering new things. There's, there's, all, there's at the same time, there's not a lot and also so many things that we have yet to discover. We, we've mapped out the planet... You know, the, 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 the oceans, the oceans and the big seas, the big lakes, they are largely or partially undiscovered. Uh, there's a lot, there's still a lot to figure out there. Um, but we also know so much about space, but there's still so, so, so much more that we don't know. The, uh, the Webb telescope is really helping with, with that. Uh, I really want us to discover more about oh, the brain and consciousness and after death. I mean, those are really like the biggest questions. Th those are the things that like is why religion exists in the first place, because we have all these questions that I we may never answer, but I'm working on it. Okay, we have a few more words. A couple of them are, um, uh, I, I don't like them. I'm just going to say that. And the first of them is right now. Whoa. Discoverer's Day. It's discoverers with an apostrophe at the end. So it is the, the possessive of the plural. Discoverers is plural. And then it's their day. Uh, the capital, the D's are capitalized. Discoverer's Day. Noun from 1974. And the synonym is Columbus Day. Which, uh, I yes, I think I remember reading Columbus Day here back in the seas. And uh, I just, I can't, I can't accept this. I don't like this. Uh, you know, the idea that Columbus discovered <laughs> this whole area is just insane. Um, I guess they changed it to Discoverer's Day in the 70s because it wasn't just Columbus. I don't know. 
Um, but again, you know, you, you kind of made it worse calling it Discoverer's Day, or there's another one. Uh, uh, you made it worse because he didn't discover anything. There were people here. I much prefer Indigenous People's Day, which is slowly taking over Columbus Day. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much that all should be celebrated. I mean, I guess because of that, then we're all here and we have created America, which is arguably great and terrible all at the same time. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Uh, the next word. Ooh. Discovery. Noun from 1529. 1A. The act or process of discovering. What should we discover today? Let's discover 1B1. It is archaic. The synonym is disclosure. It was disclosed. No, it was closed up and then it got disclosed. And so it was everybody discovered it. I, that was probably a terrible way to describe that. 1B2 is obsolete. The synonym is display. You put it on display so other people can discover it. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely see how that's obsolete. It sounds weird to say discovery for something that's display. 1C, this is also obsolete, and the synonym is exploration. Number two, something discovered. So the discovery can be a discovery. Three, the usually pre-trial disclosure of pertinent facts or documents by one or both parties to a legal action or proceeding. I have heard of this in the legal world. Uh, let's see. So this is the time before they go to trial when they're basically, what is it, disclosing facts and information and documents to probably who? To the other side, to the judge, to the jury. I don't know to exactly who, but this is the part called discovery. They get to learn all the fun things. Next word. Whoa, what? Discovery day. So this is very similar to discoverer's day, but it's discovery day. Noun from circa 1913. This synonym is Columbus Day. So it was Columbus Day, or maybe... Oh, maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it was Discovery Day, and then it became Discoverer's Day, and then it became Columbus Day. All right, now I gotta go back to Columbus Day and see when was that coined. I mean, I've I lived in a world up until recently that it was always Columbus Day, um, but I'm guessing... Maybe maybe it was Discovery Day first. Um, but yes, now I am very glad that we are evolving to a different name, Indigenous Peoples Day. It's taking the whole idea of Columbus Day and flipping it on its head, which is fantastic. Um, all right, I think we're pretty close to Columbus Day. Let's see, what have we got? What have we got here? Columbus Day, when were you coined? When did you exist? Uh, Columbus Day, oh, 1892. 1892. All right, so it was Columbus Day first. That's that's just solid fact now. Okay, the last word. Whoa. Wowie, zowie, baba. The last word is the first form of discredit. D-I-S-C-R-E-D-I-T. Transitive verb from 1559, 1. To refuse to accept as true or accurate. The synonym is disbelieve, as in discredit a rumor. I'm sorry, I will not accept that rumor. Nope, you can't tell me that that is what happened. I do not believe that Frederick... I don't even know where I'm going with this. What did Frederick do? Nope, I refuse to accept it. I am discrediting. But I, I, in my brain, when I think of discredit, I think of you are giving information to prove why it is wrong. So maybe number two or number three, we'll talk about that. Number two, 
to cause disbelief in the accuracy or authority of, as in, a discredited theory. So maybe if you're giving some evidence, that will cause disbelief in the accuracy of a thing. And three, to deprive of good repute. The synonym is disgrace, as in personal attacks meant to discredit his opponent. We see that a lot during the political days, all of the political uh, ads going back and forth. They try to discredit each other, so that person will not get the votes. Okay, I think it is time to reread the words so we can pick a word of the episode, and uh, let's do that. Discourse, discourse, discourse analysis, discourteous, discourtesy, discover, discoverer's day, discovery, discovery day, and discredit. Well, I do love a good discourse. I don't usually feel smart enough to have a discourse about a thing. I don't feel like I can speak terribly intelligently about anything, really, uh, especially many topics. But, you know, it's, it's good to have a conversation with somebody or to write up a thing or talk about a thing that can be called discourse. But I am going to pick brrr, discovery as the word of the episode. Because who doesn't... Let's do this. Who doesn't like a good discovery? I love the discovery. Let's go discover what's under the earth outside. Let's dig a big hole in our lawn. Maybe there will be a discovery. I don't know. I just love when we learn new stuff. I think that's fantastic. Hopefully... No living thing has to be injured in, or hurt in any way during the discovery. Uh, but, you know, we, we do like to learn new things. Yes, we do. Don't you? That's why you're here for this podcast. If you know of any other people who like to learn things, send them my way. You know where to find me. In your ears. Okay. Well, just because I've been sort of doing this, I did it in the previous episode, let's do it again. Let's talk about some movies I've been seeing because I like to talk about them. Oh, I ha I have movie podcast ideas. I don't have time to make them, but maybe someday. I have I do I would have lots of things to say if I had the time to say them. Uh in one day, a New Year's Day, we watched Babylon, The Good Nurse, and Emily the Criminal. Uh, we are starting to try and watch all of the award, big award nominated movies because, you know, a lot of them we haven't gotten around to or they just came out. So they're new to us. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's some good ones. Uh, these are all good. I like good things. Babylon is incredibly adult, very adult for a uh, typical Hollywood movie. Um, but the topics that it talks about, uh, I thought it was really, really fascinating. It's like, it's Hollywood. It starts in the mid, mid to late 1920s and goes on from there. And, uh, I really didn't know anything about the plot, so I'm glad that I didn't know. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very high energy, exciting way to tell the story, um, which, you know, some people may not enjoy, but at least I, I thought that the topic was fascinating for a movie lover the good nurse it's about somebody who uh it's a serial killer movie and uh emily the criminal aubrey plaza she's just so fantastic and uh yeah this was also a weird sort of comedy drama kind of something she can do whatever i loved it love love all these i love all the movies i love movies all right let's end this here thank you Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye! Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I am Spencer, your host, and I am so glad that you decided to join me. Uh, let's say the quick things. Uh, if you want to email me, contact me in any way, the email is dictionarypod at gmail.com. Instagram and Twitter social media for this podcast is at dictionary pod. You can tag me in things and message me and look at the posts that I make and all those things. 
If you want to call and leave a voicemail on the Google Voice number, that number, if you like to use the old school phone number thing, 917-727-5757. I sure would appreciate it if you became a patron. You can get early episodes for $1 a month. You can get uh, exclusives for $5 a month. Um, I do think that if I start to make other things, other audio, video, whatever the hell it is, uh, I will also put that up on Patreon, which uh, you'd probably have to be at the $5 level to get those. But, you know, if I have time and I make some other things, I'll post them over there. Uh, What else? What else? What else? What else? There's merchandise. You can go uh, click on the T public link in the show notes to check out that stuff. Please, please rate and review this show. Everybody loves to rate and review things. Share this with everybody you know in whatever way. Just send it to somebody uh, and then subscribe. And uh, if you want to see my personal uh, Instagram, Twitter, also TikTok, uh, at Speejampar, S-P-E-J-A-M-P-A-R. And right now it's really just dictionary-related things up on TikTok. Okay, the first word in this episode is the second form of discredit, D-I-S-C-R-E-D-I-T, noun from 1565, 1. Loss of credit or reputation, as in, I knew stories to the discredit of England, and that is from W.B. Yeats. If you lose your reputation, you have been discredited. So what did uh, W.B. Yeats say? I knew stories to the discredit of England, which I guess uh, the stories made England's reputation worse. Uh, They lost their credit. Number two, lack or loss of belief or confidence. And this synonym is doubt, as in contradictions cast discredit on his testimony ooh ooh he he's lost he lost his confidence they they, they don't they're not confident in him him anymore uh, because of his testimony that's pretty bad all right let's move on to the next word ooh discreditable is next adjective from 1640 Injurious to reputation, and the synonym is disgraceful, as in discreditable conduct. I much prefer to say disgraceful than discreditable. That's kind of a hard word to say. Uh, yeah, it's uh, what's what is his discreditable conduct? What did he do that uh, is going to injure his reputation? I'm sure. I'm sure you can think of lots of things that he did. Although, I, it's, why am I saying he? It could be a her. It doesn't say who did it. We're just making things up now. Discreditably is an adverb. This, a, this is not a word I think it's used much. Maybe in the legal world. Hooey! The next word is discreet. Adjective from the 14th century. One, having or showing discernment or good judgment in conduct and especially in speech. The synonym is prudent, especially capable of preserving prudent silence. Prudent silence? You can preserve prudent silence. Uh, so you, you're very, you have good judgment in what you say, in what you discern to be said, to do. You're very discreet. You're like, I don't think people should get this information but I think it's okay for them to get this information. I am showing good discernment. I'm very discreet. Number two, the synonyms are unpretentious and modest, as in the warmth and discreet elegance of a civilized home. And that is a quote from Joseph Wexberg. Um, so I guess this home that Joseph was talking about was modest. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't gold-plated. It wasn't gaudy and uh, over-attractive. It's, it's like, oh, look, we, it's just very nice and simple. Um, okay, okay. So number three, the synonyms are unobtrusive 
and unnoticeable, as in followed at a discreet distance. If you got to follow somebody, yeah, you're going to want to be at a discreet distance so you're not uh, uh, you're not obtrusive and nobody notices you. Maybe if you're in your, in your car, you want to turn off your headlights. Uh, discreetly is an adverb. Discreteness is a noun. And this is from the Latin verb descernere, which means to separate or distinguish between. And there's more at the word discern. So let's see. I'm trying to think of, when I think of discreet, um, what do I think of? I don't know. I feel like my thought is a bit more specific than numbers one and three. Uh, if you're, it probably leans towards number one. You you were showing discernment in uh, what what you do, I guess. Uh, what what you say. Um, hmm. Yeah. Prudent. I mean, I I have a pretty good idea of what prudent is, but you know, we'll have to wait till the P is to get there. But uh, yeah, discreet. You're just like um, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm just very careful uh, with with what I say and what I do. Hoo-wee! Discrepancy is next. Noun from circa 1623, exactly 400 years ago, because we are now in 2023. Discrepancy. Number one, the quality or state of being discrepant. Number two, an instance of being discrepant. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I think I've heard of discrepancy. There is a discrepancy in things. Oh, sorry. Oh, that spreadsheet and that spreadsheet. There's a discrepancy. There's a, there's a, there's a problem with the numbers. We got to fix it. So should we talk about discrepant? Who we discrepant? Adjective from the 15th century. Being at variance. The synonym is disagreeing. So yes, if your if your numbers ain't matching. They're disagreeing. Maybe they're in discord. They're at they're at variance. They are being at variance. So I mean, I guess that really just means that there's there's a variance between them. One says something, and the other says something else. There's an example: widely discrepant conclusions. So one group of people came up with a conclusion, and another group of people came up with another conclusion. And they're so different. They're, they are discrepant to each other. Discrepantly is an adverb. I have not heard of just the word discrepant. I don't think. Uh, this is from the Latin verb descrepare, which means to sound discordantly. Huh. Which is from dis plus crepare, which means to rattle or creak. And there's more at the word raven. So, uh, yeah, if, if a thing is discrepant, there is a discrepancy. Hoo-wee! The next word is discreet. Adjective from uh, the 14th century, you can emphasize either syllable, discreet or discreet. Number one, constituting a separate entity. Also, individually distinct, as in several discrete sections. And I guess I should say that uh, the first word that sounded like discrete in this episode was spelled D-I-S-C-R-E-E-T. And this one is D-I-S-C-R-E-T-E. So, so the first one has two E's next to each other. They're the same letters, but the last two letters have been swapped. So, um, I wonder if there's any connection to discrete and discrete. And let's just double check. Uh, technically, the pronunciation for the first one with the double E is discrete. And the pronunciation for this one that we are at now is discrete. Subtle difference, I know, right? Okay, number 2A for discrete spelled D-I-S-C-R-E-T-E is consisting of distinct or unconnected elements. 
and the synonym is non-continuous, unconnected. Number two, B, taking on or having a finite or countably infinite number of values, as in discrete probabilities, also as in a discrete random variable. A synonym for all is distinct. Discreetly is an adverb, and discreteness is a noun. So if you're going about your day using the word discreet, you, you have to be very specific on uh, what which discreet word you're talking about. The one where you show discernment, unpretentious, modest, unobtrusive, unnoticeable, or is it this one, uh, which is all about things being separate. And I will say, actually, the etymology for the first discreet does say it is from the verb, which means to separate. So, uh, and then, yeah, this one, the second one, constituting a separate entity, individually distinct, they are discreet from each other. I don't know if I've really heard this one used so much, this second one, or have I ever used it? Um, yeah, I, I, this one just doesn't seem familiar to me, using it in this specific way. But they are, uh, they are related, these two words. Glad we sorted that one out. Hoo-wee! The next word is discretion. Noun from the 14th century. One, the quality of being discreet, spelled with a double E. I don't really know of a better way to say it, so that's the, uh, the unobtrusive one. The synonym is circumspection, especially cautious reserve in speech. So if you are discreet, you have discretion, and you are reserved in your speech because you are deciding uh, what, what types of things you want to say. Not everything, probably. Two. Ability to make responsible decisions. Some people don't have this ability. They have just lost it completely or never had it or haven't gotten it yet. They don't have discretion. They don't make responsible decisions. I am a very responsible person, so I have discretion most of the time. 3A, individual choice or judgment, as in left the decision to his discretion. It's your choice. I don't care. Do whatever you want. It's your discretion. Whatever you choose is fantastic. 3B, power of free decision or latitude of choice within certain legal bounds, as in reached the age of discretion. Ooh, isn't that a fun age to get to? That means that you are old enough to make decisions for yourself uh, within certain legal bounds, as it says. Uh, so if you're 18, you can vote. If you're 25, you can rent a car. This, of course, I'm talking about in America. It's probably different in other languages. Uh, 21, you can drink in most or all states. Is there one state? Is it like Wisconsin that might still be 18? I don't know. Maybe they're all at 21 now. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you, so, okay, okay, let's just finish this up. Number four, the result of separating or distinguishing. So I'm trying to see if there's some sort of connection between all of these. We've got uh, you're reserved in your speech, you're being discreet, but then you can make responsible decisions. Uh, it's your choice. Uh, make free decisions, uh, separating or distinguishing. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, what's the overall theme of this word? I guess it's all about separate, but how can I connect separate to uh, 3B, which is the power of free decision or latitude of choice within certain legal bounds? So does that mean that you're separate from what you were before when you reach the age of discretion? But that's specific about the age. I don't know. My brain can't comprehend that part of things, I guess. The next word, we discretionary, adjective from 1698, one, left to discretion and exercised at one's own discretion. 
So uh, yeah, it's if it's your choice to do a thing, uh, you you are discretionary. It it's been put into your discretion to make a decision. Number two, available for discretionary use, as in discretionary purchasing power. Yep, this is all about uh, the individual choice or judgment. The next word. Hooey! Discretionary account. Two words. Noun from circa 1920. A security or commodity market account in which an agent as a broker is given power of attorney so as to be able to make independent decisions and buy and sell for the principal's account. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is all about somebody having the power, the ability left to their discretion. They can do these things. They can buy and sell the stocks, the bonds, the, the monies, the whatever it is for their, their client, basically, I guess. Discretionary account is the account, and then there's somebody who is connected to that account who can deal with the money in that account in whatever way they find appropriate. Hooey! The next word is discriminal... What is this? Discriminability. Discriminability. Noun from circa 1901. That's just a fun word to say. Discriminability. Discriminability. One, the quality of being discriminable. Number two, the ability to discriminate. So we are going to get discriminable here, but then discriminate won't be until the next episode. So, hooey! Discriminate. No, I'm confusing things. Discriminable. It's an interesting word. Adjective from 1736 discriminable is capable of being discriminated and discriminably is an adverb so it's clearly related to words that we will get into the next episode uh let's see but you know it's uh, capable of being discriminated oh yeah i mean this is a whole a whole big topic um maybe we'll we'll wait to talk about it more in in the next episode uh, let's see, discriminable, the, but I don't think, I don't think this one or the previous one, discriminability, I don't think these are used a whole lot these days. Hooey! Discriminant. So we have an A-N-T at the end of the word. Noun from circa 1948, a mathematical expression providing a criterion for the behavior of of another more complicated expression, relation, or set of relations. This is all about math, and maybe, let's see, provides a criterion for the behavior of another more complicated expression. I was trying to think if there was, can we connect this to discriminate, discriminable, because it is such a similar word? Um, Maybe when we get to discriminate, we'll be able to see uh, if we can come up with something, but you know, sometimes when it comes to math things, it's uh, it's a bit over my head. Um, I mean, I understand the general concept of it, but you know, if I'm not like actually doing it or learning it, I can't really break it down or fully understand it. The last word, ooh wee, discriminant function. Two words, noun from circa 1936. A function of a set of variables that is evaluated for samples of events or objects and used as an aid in discriminating between or classifying them. Uh, Yeah, so that must be at least somewhat similar to the previous one, discriminant, because they both start with the same word, and I'm just making assumptions. Uh, Okay, I think then it is now time to reread the words so we can pick a word of the episode. It's time for the word of the episode, word of the episode. It's my favorite time of the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had discredit, discreditable, discreet, discrepancy, discrepant, 
discreet discretion discretionary discretionary account discriminability be discriminability discriminable discriminant and discriminant function okay well uh let's see what do i want to pick i don't know there wasn't really anything that truly just jumped out at me like sometimes there is um Let's see. I mean, it's good to be discreet, I guess, but I don't know. Uh, I don't really like a discrepancy. I don't like it when my numbers ain't matching up. Um, I kind of like maybe discretion or discretionary. Um, ooh, yeah, sure. Let's pick discretion. Why not? I don't know. This is one of the ones that like I feel maybe one of the least the least, uh, I, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. I'm just, it's a, it's not totally random, but I just don't know why I'm totally picking it necessarily discretion. Maybe I'll come up with something later. Um, so let's just sing discretion, 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 discretion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was all of the words that we talked about that's that's the whole part there the whole kit and caboodle for that thing um i I love telling you the movies that i'm watching and uh you know you love it too so uh until i get caught up oh let's see i caught up with 2022 now i gotta talk about what i started to watch in 2023 and that's not the right thing uh what did we watch babylon oh my god that was a Did I talk about that? Oh, maybe I did. I can't remember. I think I did. Life After Beth. Uh, We just watched that. It's just a very uh, goofy, fun movie. An excuse. Honestly, it was probably an excuse for Aubrey Plaza to play a zombie. And she looked like she had just just a fucking blast uh, playing that role. So I'm very happy for her that you got to do that. And uh, yeah, it was just a very silly, fun movie. Don't take it too seriously is what I say. That's Spencer's review. I think that's all I got to say. I don't know, just working on a couple of things on the side and still doing some stuff. If you uh, haven't, if you're relatively new, uh, I'm helping to produce a feature length animated movie, which will take a very long time to create. We are in the very, very early stages of production. Um, So you're going to have to wait. But of course, I will update you as uh, time goes on. Um, I'm getting kind of close to finishing a teaser video, which we will send out to the world, uh, some, some place to see if we can get some funding, some investments, stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if that's going to be like a publicly available thing, but you know, it's, that's a thing I'm working on, which is fun. Also got a couple of like voiceover projects that i i'm excited about i think are very cool very fun um nothing nothing real big but maybe it'll lead to more things because i would love to do that and just do like goofy cartoon voices if you want me to do a goofy cartoon voice or something hit me up all the information is in the show notes all right that is going to be it for this episode thank you so 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 much for listening to this come again tomorrow for the next episode And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.